look at the part 12 of Rank in Every Mortal Kombat character, and we're CDR again. Oh, yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I'm trying to bring it back to, like, 3 d error related things, but most of them require doing impressions uh, of characters like Shijinko over there, and my throat is bad right now, so. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. We have some important characters to touch upon today. Sector. Sector. Hold on. Let me scroll down to D tier. I'm sorry. We love you, Sector, but we have issues. Yes. Um, so, I, I mean, I think covering a lot of parts of Sector won't actually take long because Midway yeah, Sector is like kind of like fucking non existent. Yeah. He has a cool cocooning clan, which he gets. Yeah, let um, me, um, I, I can, okay, I'll just, I guess I'll just cover the, the basic concept. Obviously, Sector was a member of the original in Quay, the son of the Grandmaster, uh, O'Nero, who we talked about in a previous part, we talked about both versions of him in a previous part, um, and, you know, he was, he is typically the main cyborg ninja villain of the franchise whether that is due to him personally being a proponent of the cyber initiative or uh you know slave protocol programming depends on the uh interpretation um but that's that's like the gist of it yeah. and similarly to when we talked about melina we take issue with him being the evil one yes because the first thing being um MK3, um, obviously he's under the same protocols like any other cyborg. By the end of that, he breaks free from it. But, well, no, it's basically what happens is, like, it gets... Yeah, it gets, like, yeah, it fucks up. Um, And drives him and and drives him kind of crazy, which, and that leads to him killing O'Neill and taking over, and then Kawhi Leonard beats him up and tells him to get the fuck out, and then he goes to Japan and creates the Kakunin. Yeah. So the sector we see from then onwards is not actually sector the person, even though like right. the slaving protocols aren't like binding him anymore. He's still like it's, some shit. Like it's fucked right. up anymore. It's a, uh, it's, a dis- it's a dysfunctional sort of mix of his actual personality and the programming. Yeah. That's the best that we can figure. Enough free will to have a personality, but still ultimately abiding the program. Yeah. In uh, Irax's Armageddon ending, it's even stated that he wants to, that him and Sub Zero want to figure out how to make both Sector and Smoke uh, human again. Yeah, which implies that Sector was just another victim of the Cyber Initiative. Right. Um, at that which point. For all the purposes, he is. Yeah. Um, that, that people don't really talk about. And later incarnations try to act like he's more at fault, but we'll talk about why that's maybe not necessarily true either. Yeah. So after like all his events, so like the grandmaster stuff, and then he makes a Dakoon and clan, he doesn't really do anything. Like <laughs> the Dakoon clan is just cyborgs. Like it looked, I, it's not really clear how he started that clan in Japan. I, like, I don't know how he, as a single entity, managed to start a fucking cyber initiative 2.0. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how he gets a sick jet. I don't know who's funding him. And that sector's just a fucking baller. Um, maybe, rich dad. Uh, <laughs> maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe he's got money from Nero. Maybe he's high. Maybe he um, is contracting out, like, the services of, like, Dr. Ratwing. Um, maybe he has contact with the with like the Red Dragon, and that could play into like him joining the forces of darkness and all again. Yeah, none of these are like canon. I'm just like spitballing. Like, yeah, yeah. he got very dumb with an arm again. Obviously, everyone was supposed to get yeah. one, but he never got one. Yeah. And that would have helped because this is like the first proper appearance of Sakun tournament edition, yeah. um, being like the uh, A G B A port. Of- they are it, it has, but it had the unique characters like Sector, um, which have like canon law, and that like has him started to cune on. But he doesn't really have a role besides sit besides that. That's basically just saying yeah. what he's up to right now. He doesn't have any relevance to the 
any ongoing plot. Right. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah. Oh, uh, in Armageddon, he has created this gigantic warship thing. Like, I, I like, like it, it's pretty big. Like, I'm assuming it's something akin to like a like a like a shield helicarrier from Marvel, like that kind of like massive airborne uh, vehicle. Yeah, it's big. I guess cloaking technology and yes. you can like fucking um, <laughs> stun a guard and then like bind him to these weird yeah. things. Um, he does have that stun weapon to capture to capture Taven with. He's pretty he's pretty stacked. He wants yeah. to know like what's going on with the thing with with everything. I guess I don't know. Like I guess the the other villains haven't like looped him in and got him into the forces of darkness yet. And then uh, at this point, the cocooning has become so large of a menace that the uh, that the special forces is after them, and like Sonia confronts him, and it's even stated in her bio that they captured uh, Jax at some point, and then in, in Jax's Armageddon ending, it says something about uh, Sekiro putting some kind of implant in his head or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's a very bizarre thing. Uh, um, I'm guessing so, so, Jack, when Jax is going to get his bio card, they would have elaborated on that a bit. Because because the fact that's like a recurring detail suggests that's like a, a like a, some relevance. A plot element. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. The Takunin's cool. It's just not really much for Sector as an individual. It's just a generic um, robot. So motive's not really clear. <laughs> Besides, I want cyborg stuff. I don't know what his end goal is. Um, we don't really know why I like cyborgs besides I'm insane robot. Um, there's not a lot of depth or intrigue besides oh, it's a cool cyber clan. <laughs> right. I, I think his goal, from what I can tell, seems to just be like Takun and Dominion over Earthrealm. Yeah, probably Ultron. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's golden, right? That seems like it. And I, I, I guess it's a better old drum, but anyway. <laughs> actually, you know what? He is actually a uh, sector. I'm thinking about it. He is actually quite similar to Ultron in terms of the daddy issues. Oh, yeah. There we are. <laughs> um, Especially like the comic version of Ultron. I know you've only seen the movie, but anyway. And isn't it Sector's ending that alludes to um, Triborg? <laughs> yeah, Sector's Armageddon ending is sort of a proto version of the idea of Tribor where he combines with uh Cyrex and Smoke. That's like a thing that happens for some reason. Um Yeah, it's pretty cool we've got like a variant of that. Um Yeah, so let, let's talk about uh this is going to take not very long. I, I just want to cover her on adaptations really quickly before we before we go into NRS. <laughs> Um, because that's the bulk of our ranting and stuff. <laughs> uh, Sector is is conspicuously absent from the from Mortal Kombat Annihilation. I say conspicuously because uh, Cyrex and the cyborg version of Smoke bo- are both in the movie, stated to have been reprogrammed by by Shao Kahn to hunt after uh, you know like the chosen warriors and stuff. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of weird. Um, the explanation that I plan to go with for a, a sequel fanfic that I'm planning on is that Sector was uh, captured and like tortured by like Shao Kahn in order to obtain the information of how to reprogram the cyborgs to function as extra minions. So he's like trapped in that world somewhere, um, and then he'll become a he'll become a, a player in the in the in, in the plot of that of that sequel when I uh, get around to writing it. Uh, so yeah, presumably based on the designs of those cyborgs, he would have just been like Cyrex, but red instead of yellow because they, you know, it's back when the cyborg ninjas were all like uniform except for the colors. Uh, he also shows up a bit in Defenders of the Realm, which is kind of a funny thing. Okay, so when we get to see Cyrex and Sector uh, outside of their cybernetic forms in MK9, um, Sector is is visibly. Uh, an Asian man, presumably Chinese, since China is the origin point of the Lin Kuei clan, and uh, Cyrex is an African man, specifically from Botswana. Uh, Defenders of the Realm, although this came out before MK9, has this weird, funny thing where, where when we see them briefly as humans, it's in reverse, 
where Sector is the is is uh, is a dark skinned guy and Cyrex is a light skinned guy. So that's kind of like a weird, funny thing looking back at it. Um, that's yeah. Alex Ellis <laughs> was notable about the Thunderbird Realm Sector. Uh, he also appears in an episode of uh, MK Legacy where his CGI model is like and like low budget TV level CGI replica of Cyrex's MK9 model with uh, Sector's colors, and then the two of them um, beat up Hydra, and that's the whole episode. And yet the cyborgs are somehow still the coolest part of that show. <laughs> oh, they definitely um, are. It's hilarious. Yeah. Um, and, and another thing, like, is like, uh, is around, because, and I guess it aligns with the fact that, like, the Grandmaster and Sector on, like, they don't have like, a and, um, family connection in that show. show so it does, a... so that kind of just proves that a Nero is definitely just like a different motherfucker to the Link Wigger Master in the game. Um, completely different lore. Could you say that again? But because, because like, O'Neill is still, like, an Asian man, and then, like, obviously sex is portrayed as, um, like, oh, like yeah. yeah, 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 like, this is before, like, this is before Sector was the Grandmaster's son. That's what you're trying well, to well, say. No, 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 that was always the thing. I, I'm, my point was just, that, like, going to O'Neill, the, like the defense oh, around the hero is Nero not Nero. the same character. Yes, um, sorry. I sorry. think so. I think that confirms it, and it's not just like a weird portrayal of that character, which yes. is good to okay, know. Now I'm following. Now I'm following. <laughs> uh, funny thing about MK Legacy because I like roasting that show. Um, that show has a Power Rangers actor playing Kenshi and a Star Trek actor playing Sonya, and the cyborgs are still the most interesting part of the show. <laughs> How did they get those actors? I thought they were just like random no, little fuckers. No, Kara and I were talking about it the other day. Kara is a friend of ours. Sorry, audience. And um, and she was confused either. Like one of them's like, like both of them are like fairly high profile, at least in their respective like fandoms and shit. Like, it's so weird. Oh my god. Anyway, um. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so going into uh, NRS sector. Oh boy. Uh, so let's talk about the good part. Uh, this is what firmly establishes that he is indeed the the Grandmaster's son. Yeah. That's the good part. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so I guess we'll start with MK9. Uh, MK9 has established that... Um, Sector was like trained, like from a very young age, to be a member of Lin Kuei, to be an assassin, and blah 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 blah. Which makes sense because that's the grand master. So so far yeah, so good. Harsh training by his father. We'll be getting to why that's more of a thing. And then they try to the MK9 intro doesn't not intro bio. Okay, MK9 in general um fails to realize how. The, the sympathetic potential of Sector, similarly to the way that the canon of MK has always failed to notice the sympathetic qualities of Melina, where they try to act like, oh, he's evil and you relish it and blah, blah, blah. And now he's the main proponent of the cyber initiative and he's willingly forcing other people to get converted, even though he was brainwashed before. And all of the information that we have suggests that his father is very abusive and emotionally manipulative. Yeah. Um, like Shao Kahn level abusive and emotionally manipulative. This game more so, despite establishing in his bio that um, the Grandmaster is pleased because Sector relishes his life of, of an assassin. And there we are, that's not good. <laughs> it doesn't really oh. work. I don't, I don't get, like, there's, I don't see why he'd have any appeal to being an assassin. There's no real reason, and I say, hey, I want to please my dad. Which then, yeah, you've got like the fucking manipulative stuff, but it's not like they expand on that. It's just, hey, we need to establish this thing to portray this guy as evil. Or, Even though it doesn't really fit with... Right. Or the only other thing could be as a case of I've literally never done anything else with my life. Yeah. He's also a young age. Um, it, it was never in question, I said, to join a link way, as if he... As if, like, he, at one point he wasn't like, like I feel like once you like once he was born, he would have been associated with the clan anyway. Right. Um. 
So yeah, because like. So he was never. He never really had a choice. Yeah, because like why did Yanga be on? They were both taken as babies. So I don't. No, so we don't even know what happened with Cyrex and Smoke. I mean, and MK9 Smoke doesn't know what happened with Smoke. <laughs> well, we kind of know his smoke was very vague, like like after like the and stuff. Like he's just found by Lin Kuei and obviously seeing his powers, they like groom, which is kind of not really very detailed, is it? But it's something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The secretive clan allows Sek to express his darker nature using any means necessary to complete his task. What, 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 what the fuck? Darker nature. Is it like some fucking emo edge lord guy? Is that what we're suggesting here? That's just a very, I mean, this is an odd I mean, description of him. Yeah, I mean, Noob Saibot did come out of it, so. <laughs> oh, God. Um, well, I guess that's the, ex- the answer to why he can pledge his life an assassin. But that's just lame. <laughs> That is lame. That is so lame. Um, and it mentions how he's been hired by Shang Tsung to uh, attend a more comment to eliminate the different competitors, probably have a chance to compete. I'm fine with that. Obviously, that's like, like, uh, basically, like, obviously, that's a new bit of law, essentially, a retcon because I think it's supposed yeah. to be a soft reboot that actually remains in continuity because Rain has to change, like, the future, except stuff is already different, so that premise doesn't work. But on its own, I found that idea, especially when obviously it just leans on Nero more to like being a, a bad motherfucker because he's willing to do that. Um, um albeit he, I, I, does, albeit there's no, there's seemingly no real reward besides money, which you think there'd be more than that considering your realm's on the line. <laughs> right. I, yeah. Yeah, I personally don't like the association of the original Lin Kuei with Shao Kahn's forces. It it makes sense on the level of Oniro's an asshole. Um, but yeah, they've never really established what the Lin Kuei would even get in return. And I I find that recent MK material, especially uh, like the 2021 movie, is the biggest culprit of it. Of this, just turns the Lin Kuei into like into like reduces the Lin Kuei to a state where they feel like this arm of Shao Kahn's forces and not an individual organization with their own like agency as a as a group. That's fair. I hear Alfie barking. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think if you just explain it properly then it's fine. Obviously give the Lin Kuei enough of its own focus yeah. on those events. Which is what I do in Reborn, but um yeah, I don't like how it's done in this game, definitely. But no. I'll, I'll, sure. Especially since, like, okay, <laughs> so B- Bihan can loophole around the can't fight against your own realm rule because he has outworld cryomancer heritage. The same is not true of Sector and Cyrex. But also, uh, MK9 doesn't pay attention to that rule to begin with. Yeah. So, yeah. And in fact, like hiring out Earthrealm mercenary or, or mercenaries from a different realm so that to help himself conquer, like Shao Kahn hiring out mercenaries from a different realm to help himself conquer a realm that he's going after, is uh, probably why the Elder Gods established the can't fight against your own realm rule to begin with. Probably, it's the only rule we really have. I don't even like the rule, but you know, it's the only rule we have, and unless you're going to establish a and uh, uh, some other set of rules, and you know. I think it works. I mean, I, I guess it kind of needs works, to but I, it, it feels limiting. And also, then Scorpion's yeah. existence doesn't make sense unless you bring in like a bunch of contrived, like, like, well, he was no from it before, like, oh. yeah, I just, I just, yeah. I don't like it. But obviously, yeah. don't change it unless you have like an actual replacement set of rules that makes sense because no MK tournament has made sense so getting rid of the only rule does not help right um yeah 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 um what was I going to say I, I do think it works in terms of like if like needing an explanation for why Boraicho hasn't stepped in to just wipe the floor with all of Shao Kahn's people <laughs> yeah th- like that rule is basically just for Boraicho but then simultaneously, it brings in like other limitations for potential retellings. So, like, I, I don't know. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Psycho at this point is simultaneously given a more sympathetic backstory, but also more vilified. Yeah, because he just Weird. established that, hey, he likes he likes um, being an assassin, and he likes cybernation. I like the idea of Sector actually being, like, like agreeing with um, cyberization, um, in, like, like, in the circumstances that he doesn't know, it's, like, forced, like, enslavement with, like, the fucking same rules. Right, in, in, the, in the sense that he likes the cybernetic augments in and of themselves. Yeah. Because because that yeah. actually makes him you like like gives him like a unique point and obviously having Clarks and Sector and MK One which I like because he gets seen as humans they can have that discussion I know you do a good job of that right. kind of um, yeah. like like when they start fight when they have like a fucking fight the end of Sirens show that's a bit dumb and so it's like I don't want to be a link quite anymore like that sort of convincing you needed like I feel it would have left a while ago at that point but um. Yeah, I don't know. You're leaving your mark for death. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's the fact that if you try and leave the Lin Kuei, you're fucking dead. Yeah, yeah. someone was trapped to it, especially the grandmaster's own fucking son. He doesn't have a choice. Um, nope. No free will allowed. I'm just going spitting with the like same protocols, obviously. Um, yeah, just like Lena doesn't have a choice. Very similar circumstances <laughs> here, and a lot of fans yeah. notices the sympathetic portray the sympathetic qualities of Lena, which is good. But like, not a lot of people give the same notice with uh, with Sector. Yeah, no things wrong with Sector, and like, I guess it's less noticeable with him because he is just like like a generic villain. I mean, so is Melina, but Melina actually has like a core level of depth, and Melina probably has more fans. Who actually care? Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas Sector, most of his fan base is just oh, cool red cyborg. You don't see many people gushing about Sector's law, and rightfully so because it's kind of shit. Like, there's not much here. Um, but like, obviously, like the ground, like like Nero, that's the thing. You need to expand upon his father more. This blatant dickhead who is very important to the Lin Kuei and Shirayu characters. He right. should be focused on more. Um, right. A, a common like headcanon that I see like a lot of people like everyone just kind of assuming really is like a part of them is is just that Sector is like trying to gain the approval of his father. His father is like a dickhead that doesn't really that like disregards him and stuff. And yeah. uh, that right there is very full with Sector's character and something that definitely I definitely think should be utilized. Um, it makes him turn to be like the most like loyalist of the Lin Kuei members. Under the logic that basically Onir is manipulating him, or else it just makes for an uninteresting, bland um, villain. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. The the abuse that his father put him through should be like analyzed. Um, one thing I want to say is he's in um, MK Gold, which is like the updated version of MK Four with extra characters. Uh, we forgot to mention it. It's not it's not much. He, I think that's when his program starts to deteriorate. I think that's like the main plot thing that happens there. Um, it's it's like early sex door, so he's not really like a character yet. Um, yeah. But I did want to I did want to state it for the sake of completionism. Uh, but yeah, yeah. In MK9, they just vilify him and make him okay with forcing other people to become cyborgs, and he's like the one not slaving protocol, the one who just thinks it's a good idea, and blah blah blah. Yeah. And then I just like also, the MK9. have him overthrow his dad, like the midway timeline, but there's no. Like, unless he realizes that it was an abusive piece of shit, there's no motivation for it. But in the MKX comic, he's just wanting to continue doing cyber things. Yeah, so after MK1, he's just generic cyborg, um, which is the main problem with like having cyborg characters, especially when we don't see the move past MK3 ever. Um, right. Because then they're just non characters. And while I love cyborgs, when they're under the same protocols, they are intentionally non characters who are supposed to be broken free pronouns, but they rarely are. Um, and if they are, then like you have a Cyrex situation where they just fucking kill themselves. 
I mean, that's just yeah. Thyrex, but like they they usually won't last long, basically. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's not there's not nothing really to talk about there with like MK2 and three roles for Sector and MK9, um, except that like at some point after like the Shao Kahn's invasion, like he, his same protocols he breaks free from, like it it's treated as not like a corruption thing, like. It seems like he's actually like broken free. What? He was under seven protocols in MK9. Yeah. Oh, For sure. Thought, like, okay. And then and then he just I goes and kills a mirror, I think. Right. Unless he does it after yeah. the invasion. I, I I let me check. Because I thought that's I what happened. After. It um, feels like it's after. Me accidentally giving MK9 too much credit, oh, bro. <laughs> um, Is he, like I thought he wasn't under saving protocols. I thought they just straight up vilified him because bad writing. Well, come on, 2011. It's semi canonical. Sector dedicated his life to Lin Kuei. His vict- victories had brought honor to his father, the Grandmaster. He had proven himself worthy. It was time to replace his father in a ball attack. Like the smash. Okay. Why? Okay. Yeah. No. No. Never mind. Yeah, he he just kills him after after I'm get free. Yeah, which is weird because he's seemingly loyal to his father, and I was just like I want to replace yeah. him. Now. Which and and then like that ending, they treat O'Neill as like some incapable um old man, and and like it just tries to vilify Sector further, even though anybody who's playing mythologies knows O'Neill is a massive dickhead. <laughs> yep. Um, All my enemies destroyed in a single transaction. Yeah, like like Fro is a massive fucking villain. He is more responsible for the death of the Shirayu than Quan Chi. But hey, don't 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 let NRS know that. Blame it on Quan Chi. Yeah. Blame it on Vihan. Um, just don't ever right. bring up Nero because he's not a playable character. Therefore, he can't be given any depth whatsoever. Right. That that is something I forgot to mention in the last part. In addition to, uh, you know, and, and MKX was t- talking about Scorpion. In addition to Hanzo learning the truth, focusing him on wanting to kill Quan Chi, it also is Sub Zero admitting that the Lin Kuei had some involvement in the death because of that deal. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm like in MK11 when Scorpion fights Sector, um, he even like brings this up. Like, dude, dude, he, this guy killed like the guy who like orchestrated like your family's death. Why? Or he's like, you should like this guy. <laughs> yeah, you'd think, you'd think, and that, and like Sector and Scorpion is a cooler team up than fucking Sub Zero and Scorpion because they can just burn everyone. Yeah. Like, no, no, imagine them teaming up and like Sector goes to fight Nero or Scorpion goes to fight Quan Chi. That's so much better. Why didn't they do that in Scorpion's Ranch? Fucking hell. That's some fucking tag team craziness. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, there we are. <laughs> um Okay, so so yeah, he he is just like clinically evil, um, which is dumb, and I keep forgetting that because I remembered like this being a real thing now a while ago, and I just got that again. Because in my version, reborn, he just burned the same girls like anyone else because O'Neill doesn't like give a fuck about his son. He he is a tool, uh, yeah. Um, and then obviously sector sector breaks free on like some circumstances during the invasion, and then he just straight away goes to O'Neill. And um, fucking fights him to the death, um, and he like uses a pulse plate to like rip his heart out, um, and he does that because he doesn't approve of like the use of the saving protocols. Um, so he has like an actual motive other than I want power because I'm generic villain. Like no, he does it to punish his fucking abuser who's just put him under saving protocols, and then he's exactly. like, and then he like plans to like actually like like do the side initiative, but in his own vision where it's like not forced slavery because right. he believes that's actually a detractor when he actually liked the Siren Initiative under the idea that like it would enhance right. them. Whereas if you make them right. strip them of free will, then they are just generic puppets. Right. Who are incapable. Because, like, yeah. Sector is Sector is essentially like a like a what's the term? Sector is like a transhumanist. But not like necessarily a dictator. Yeah. And I feel like just giving uh, him his own, like, opinion yeah, like that makes him actually, like, interesting. And again, not right. a generic villain like he has been. 
since his existence. In the in the MKX comic, this isn't this doesn't like gel with what you're saying, but I I just want to bring it up. Uh, when, like Sub Zero goes after his cyber initiative and everything to like finally stop them, and Sector has started creating rather than forcing people to join, he's been creating uh clones presumably like blank slate clones without like minds of their own to cyberize and then sort of like remote control uh serve him and stuff yeah which is a bit strange <laughs> um yeah it's a bit strange but i i like the part where he's moving away from forcing people i guess i don't know it's a bit weird and 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 then obviously he gets killed by sub zero with help from cyrax cuz he's sort of like oh you know even if you break the slaving protocols nobody here's on your side you fucking traitor fuck you fuck you and then cyrax is like um actually and then shoots a net at sector and then sub-zero like does the spine revision um blah 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 blue and then all of the clone cyborgs are programmed to like sir to like switch to uh being loyal to like the last original cyber or whatever the, the way that they put it like like they're they're like sort of on roaming without any command until they settle until they like they sync up to Cyrax and they become loyal to him. But then Cyrax kills himself, so none of that goes anywhere. Yeah, well, he uh, fucking suicide bombs like all the yeah. like cyborgs. Even though presumably you could just break them from their saving protocols, like you did with Cyrax, and thus you have like just like freed all these motherfuckers. Instead, no, kill everyone. But no, 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 no. Cyrax is a good guy. Sector's evil, right? Like. Big brain, yeah. MK. Yeah. Huge brain. Because yeah. the thing is, when we treat guys like a Bihan, like it's Bihan especially, but also Sector to an extent, extent, as just like these like generic villains, then you can say yeah. that about every Lin Kuei member because they all have done the same list of fucked up shit. Right. Sector, more so right. just because of like this weird comic shit. Um, right. It's the same attitude as acting as though like Katana gets to like break free from Shao Kahn's forces and dip, and, but Melina is somehow irredeemable, or Scarlet, for that matter. Yeah, because um, they haven't been free before, and we have to stick to the status quo. Uh, yeah, so, you can't get any death, because you haven't had death before. We're just going to do the same thing, and people are going to like it, status even if it's inferior to the original thing. Yep. <laughs> yep. Status quos are limiting. Yeah, just do something, you fucking know. <laughs> just give Sector some damn. Um, yeah. And he's in MK11 as like an NPC. His head's in MKX. <laughs> um, which Triborg takes to seemingly like gain his abilities or something. That's why he's showing the inch like in like the reveal trailer. <laughs> oh, yes, the reveal trailer for Triborg shows him grabbing Sector's head. For some reason, we have a theory is that oh my god, Triborg is Sector. Yeah. I mean, they're both gen- the... they're both generic cyberization as good characters, right. but no, they're different. <laughs> in the um, in, yeah, in the story, it's just sitting there with his like wired up to one of his arms, which I guess has the hologram projector in it, in that horribly designed room with nothing in it other than that table. And yeah, yeah, Triborg. First of all, S- Sector's head, like like his human head would still be inside of that robot head because that's how a cyborg works. So unless he's unless Sector has like transformed his consciousness into some kind of like uh like an, into some kind of like AI thing that can transfer between bodies, making him even more like Ultron, uh Triborg literally can't be Sector. Yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, Sector's also in MK11 as an NPC, despite Ed Boon saying there'd be no NPCs, which is why uh, Ed Boon's why? word should never be taken for, because he's either trolling um, or just actively lying, whether intentional or not. But this is why right. people who pay attention to his Twitter account are fucking idiots. Like, yep. his Twitter has no value. But like, checking to see if there's the crypt events, if you still care about that in 2022, only... because it's the only right. source of finding out when the events are live. Because MK11's update thing uh, to notify when a crypt event is happening fucking stopped working properly, and they won't do an update because they stopped supporting the thing. Um, <laughs> it's an absolute mess. Bye, Digrel. The, uh, 
uh, <laughs> the only message from Ed Boone that should be taken as fact is when someone asked him if they were doing anything for the 30th anniversary of MK, and he said no. Yeah. <laughs> because they clearly aren't. I don't care what your fake link tell you. They're not doing jack. No vine, no vine, dude. Uh, <laughs> but, um... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, they'll snow blind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah and MK11. MK11, Sector is an NPC jobber who does nothing and then Kano converts him into a bomb and then he dies. Yes, Kano, without Sector knowing, he's, he turns him into a bomb and detonates him randomly. But hey, he's not sympathetic, right? Even though this fucking nope. sexual predator like terrorist has just blew him up. Like, yeah, what, also, what is he, with having Cyborg self-destruct? They don't have, like, don't bombs know. installed with him, man. It doesn't work. Uh, I mean, Cyrax does, I, I guess. <laughs> yeah. He has, like, an yeah, infinite bomb people. supply. <laughs> yeah. They are people. Also, I, I think I know why they do it, though. It's because self-destructing was, like, one of their fatalities in, in MK3. Man, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, let's blow up the world. Why. Let's go smoke. Smoke, oh. blowing up the earth. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there you go. And also, it's because obviously it's it's past sector, and there's some like other weird stuff, like obviously he's around for like Link Road factory stuff. Then he gets like the armor, and then like when he goes to fight Johnny Cage, he's like, hey, hey, um, Cyrax beat you in the tournament as a superior, and like obviously beat you, and also there's human Cyrax. So yeah, sector makes a very good point there. Very logical thinking. Smart guy. No, and then Johnny says, says, did you know that I beat Shinnok? Oh wait, you were dead when that happened. No, he was alive. What? Like, like I can't. It's incomprehensible how these motherfuckers don't even know their law from the previous. This game. That is you, how little they did, care. Like, like you did, did no, like you wrote him, this. And he was not dead. You wrote this line of dialogue. You had someone voice act it. You had it animated. You put it in the game, and nobody checked Sector's wiki page. Nope. Nope. Nobody looked at just the cutscenes for the previous game. Do you know how many <laughs> YouTube channels there are whose entire content? Is just uploading compilations of your fucking cutscenes. That's how I watched the fucking story of MK11 because I didn't want to give them money. Well, clearly they, they don't, don't know this because it. they thought they could sell a 35 quid DLC that only had three characters in it, with making it more expensive than Combat Pack One, which had like yeah. way more DLC skins and like actual like an actually decent selection of characters. They thought they could sell it for more of a. <laughs> they thought they could put a bigger price tag on it because they had a had a story mode. Cut scenes that you can find online. Because yep. the game, you it's can't sad. fucking copyright your gameplay. So yeah, you can't you can't add a price tag just because you've got this. Right. It's not like the story mode gives you any unique gameplay because no, right. that would be actual creativity like conquest. They don't do that. They just have you do like the generic story fights, which is just generic like regular fights. Like, no one has fun also, playing the story mode. Um, <laughs> once again, uh, in addition to the story being shit as to why I did not buy MK11, I just want to remind everyone, NetherRealm Studios is an awful company that is about on the level of Activision Blizzard in terms of employee abuse and horrible crunch time and sexual harassment and transphobia and giving people PTSD by making them look at fucking real-life gore as fucking fatality research, and they're an awful company, and you should not give them money. Yes. Just thought I would remind everyone. There are mul- there are several several articles about this. Yeah, and they said they were looking into it, and they gave no update. So that oh, means they no. didn't. <laughs> um, yep. That means they didn't do shit. Okay, back to sector. Yeah, he does yeah, get the spiffy, the spiffy uh, chronicle white accents. Drip, yeah, there's so. also like a really weird like cutscene which. I believe this is where we first see Sector, like he's not revealed in Channel 4, he's like revealed in this random corridor scene in Chronicles Keep, because Chronicles Keep just consists of a bunch of random corridors. Um, yeah. And yeah, like, so Sector, Kat- Revenant Katana, and Shao Kahn just casually walking down the <laughs> corridor together, seeing Chronicles. Like, like the lineup of, vi- of like villains for, for like Chronicles like group, it, it, it's insane. 
Like, that is such a random team. And it could actually be interesting if you let them interact with each other. Because, yeah. you yeah. you know, like, I, I, I don't see Sex of Shao Kahn and Katana getting along. No, well, I could see potentially Sector and Katana getting along because they're both angry and hate their dads. Um, Shao Kahn is the abusive dad, so... Yeah, they should just both be beating him up. Um, so, yeah, and that leads into him getting his ass kicked by Sub-Zero or Scorpion. Um, and then obviously, like I said, there's a Johnny thing where he loses and then Kano fucking detonates him, which makes Frost a new leader. Um... Which you think for like someone who's like, I joined Kronika for power. You think Kronika would have made her the leader automatically? Um, yeah. <laughs> like, 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 imagine that, and then you still like Kronika after that. Like, imagine being told, hey, hey, a second in command to this guy just pulled in from the past. You're inferior, inferior to this dead guy. You fucking suck, Frost. Oh, God. Oh, God. Everybody's so mean to Frost. Leave me. <laughs> Uh, oh, one more thing in Sub Zero's dog shit MK11 ending. I don't care that it made like the B Beyond Cryon thing happen because it's disingenuine because this the rest of this game treats Beyond as a shithead and they have Cryon be a massive dick to him for no reason. Yep. And guess what they say in that ending? They say Sector corrupted the clan. How? What did he do? Why are you blaming Sector for things his father did? Oh, right, his because he's an NPC, so you have to put the blame on like, an actual playable character, even though you haven't made Sector playable in this game. Oh, my God. It's so dumb. Sector is literally a Nero scapegoat. It's fucking insane. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's... it's, it's oh my they God, treat I'm Sector so as the cause for the cyber initiative, for all the things wrong in the Link Quake clan, even though, no, it's the person in charge, the Grandmaster. Sega was only the Grandmaster after MK3. Fucking hell. Yeah, it's, it's utterly, it's utterly ridiculous. They just, they just shove everything that should be, you know, Onero stuff onto him. Because he's the like, like they treat him as essentially as well. He's the playable roster manifestation of Oniro, but he's he's his own person. Yeah, they treat him as one the same, which obviously again makes he's, Sector like a generic villain. Um, right, he's his own person who and, suffered yeah. a lifetime of of abuse and emotional manipulation, and he, you know, and and they even like sometimes treat treat Cyrax as though they him and Sector were friends. So like, you know. Maybe uh, he should be treated with a little basic human empathy. Can you think? And yeah, it's hard to yeah. to argue, like treat like buddies, like even in MK9, like like they argue about like cyber initiative, like politics, but like they're clearly like close to each other still because they fight together in like literally all the MK1 stuff. Until randomly, the two fight over like some dumb contract with Shang Tsung. Oh. <laughs> My in my fanfic Mortal Kombat Requiem, um, Sector's entire storyline is is just dedicated to like being a redemption arc. Uh, what I do is I have it to where Sub Zero went back and rebuilt and repaired Cyrax after the events of the MKX comic, and then eventually later on decided that Sector was worth a second chance because Kui Ling is a compassionate person that doesn't give up on people. That's his fucking character. So he rebuilds and repairs Sector too, and offers him a second chance. So obviously, on like a sort of probationary status, like he knows he might be difficult. Like he uh, he wired in like the, the the controls for weapon for Sector's weapon systems into like like a panel on Cyrex's arm that he can say so the button he can push, <laughs> um, and, and stuff like that. And and Sector is left with the new Lin Kuei, and he's and he's left to deal with like how it's changed and what he wants to do with his life. And he has a lot of personality clashes with. Uh, with Frost, but when the when the threat of the Takunin uh, rears its head in my fanfic, which is led by my ver my version of Onira, who's like returned as as the cyborg man, uh, Sakador is able to like grow as a person, and him and Frost get over their differences, and he realizes the bigger threat, and he decides to eventually dedicate himself to like trying to help the new Link play, and decides to not be a dickhead anymore, and sort of. Make some level of amends with, uh, you know, with Cyrax and and with Sub Zero, and uh, even gets the 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 white paint for MK11, though for a different reason. 
Uh, Which is really nice. I don't have to follow up on NRS dog shit, so I just have Sector be a human being and not some generic um, cyborg good humanity bad motherfucker. Oh. In your, in your in your version, he 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 becomes a, he becomes a dad. Yeah. Like like an adoptive dad, but still, found family is valid. Like you. <laughs> no. Um, so he's kind of a forty-five minutes talking about sector. I expected this, even though it's not actually talking about canonically, because there's so much that could be done with this yeah. character, and it's pretty obvious once, like you actually use your brain yeah. and apply it to a Nero. And, like, you think about that connection and, like, how you could expand on that. Mm -hmm. But no, we can't get any expansion on characters or anything like that. And that never happens in that case because fuck you guys. Ah. Hector is conceptually awesome. But, uh, yeah, he's been wasted. Uh, I say, uh, maybe I'm putting him too high, but I I would say, like, D tier just below Frost, uh, but above Goro. Yes, I agree that. I was going to say the same thing. Awesome. I really like Sector. He's my favorite cyborg, yet simultaneously my least favorite cyborg in the game. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next, yeah, we've got Shang Tsung. Oh, God, he's going to take that. Oh, God. Uh oh, this is going to be fun. Is it? Got a few characters that are going to be a bit. Um, it'll be fun from a ranting standpoint. We'll, we'll get to that. There's so much for this man. He's like involved in literally every game in some way. <laughs> yeah, Shang, Shang Tsung is the main villain of the original MK. He was the officiator of like, you know, the corrupted version of the of the tournament. He's a big sorcerer man who forced Shao Kahn and half of the Deadly Lands. And like, y'all know who Shang Tsung is. Um, you know. Hello? Are you still there? Oh, yeah. I was checking on okay. Doggo. <laughs> oh, you're checking on Alfie. Awesome. Awesome. Alfie cameo. Uh, sorry if you guys can keep hearing and barking because he's <laughs> he's a bit of a yapster. Yes. Yes. A uh, special guest background noise appearance from the protagonist <laughs> of Popper After Walk 1 and 2. He, he do be a famous stuff. And I use Instagram thinking of all the clout I could get with him. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. So Shane's like. <laughs> um. Term. Okay. Yes. Big sorcerer man. He's in a lot of MK. Holy shit. He's in a lot of MK. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna run through this. I'm just gonna run through this. Okay. He's a dude. In the trilogy. He is like Shao Kahn's like second in command and like a right hand servant. Uh, but Shao Kahn gets mad at him after he fails the MK one tournament. Uh, and so, like, the okay, so the reason that Shao Kahn gives Shang Tsung the, his youth back or whatever in MK2 is, I, I don't think it's a reward. I think it's just so that he doesn't fuck up. Because Shao Kahn's mad at him and shit. Um, so that's a thing. Um, what did, I'm trying to remember if there was anything else, like, noteworthy. Oh, I think Shang Tsung is, like, the one who suggested, like, the change in the in the... In the in the rules of the tournament, because they okay, the change in the rules of the tournament in, of the, of the tournament thing from MK from the MK one tournament to the MK two tournament is a thing in in the lore before MK nine. I just don't remember the specifics of it. Um, yeah, I forget where it was like specifically mentioned. It's the um, it's like the tie-in comics. Ah, okay, okay, got it. Thank you. Um. Yeah, so that's so that's a thing, and then that's mostly it for trilogy. He's not an MK4 because he's not really relevant, but also it raises in the question where he did go. So well, Dave Mike uh, was actually explaining this. Um, he he actually disassociates himself from Shao Kahn for a bit. Seemingly, he go he like he just returns to his home in Outworld. Yeah, he has a house. Crazy. Um, just we just see any difference to his past? I don't really know. Um, they just say Shang Tsung's home in his Congress. Um and Shao Kahn, because he has like only like two allies, those being two fucking jobbers in Kano and Reptile, he's like, I need Shang Tsung's help. So he sends Reptile to go see him. Um and yeah. This is this is Deadly Lion. So now Shang Tsung is goaded. Yeah, Shang Tsung peaked here. 
Uh, if he's more yeah. main villain. Yeah. I mean. To be fair, to be fair, to be fair, even though we like Quan Chi more, he he peaks here also. <laughs> Yes, because the thing, the reason I like Quan Chi more is that, like, when he, uh, like, as a standalone character, he's way better. Like, just yeah. a way more interesting character. Yep. And we'll get into why Shang Tsung doesn't really work as a solo villain beyond MK1. Uh, yeah. Well, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. There you go, and okay. I'm enjoying like, all these events. Um, you know, um, so, ba- so basically, like, Quan Chi, he's, like, found a the tombs of like John King's Murphite army, um, and running away from Scorpion. He, so he goes to Shang Tsung's home, which actually, yeah, that is depicted as palace. So, yeah, his home is his palace. There we are. Um, <laughs> and um, actually, no, because I, I know, actually, I, it's it's weird because they, because the palace is made like them. once they form because they get like the people send but also when they do the alliance stuff, it's treated as like the acid bath stage. So, I guess his house was is like one of the like buildings there actually and they just added the palace next to it because the acid bath is like connected to the palace right so there you are i figured it out <laughs> that's kind of cool um yeah. yeah location law used to be a thing in mk it's it's kind of crazy it but um yeah yeah so he goes he goes to his home um and he wants to do an alliance because shang Tsung is so magic he can like actually put like the souls in the army um and obviously, just like a general ally is a good thing. Um, and then Shang Tsung's like, Yeah, let's do a chad handshake to seal the deal. Um, oh my god, yes. Scorpion's oh team really shows up at some point and then they just beat his ass and then like hurl him into the acid bath. <laughs> um, dumbass, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, that is Scorpion's existence in the game as, as we covered where he just shows up and gets beat up. Which, he's jobbing. It's, he's getting beat up constantly, but we respect the determination. We respect. Yeah, it, it makes him cool and defeat because he just keeps coming back. He doesn't care. Um, yes, his characters it, can be cool even if they lose. <laughs> yeah, so they don't like this one. They go to um, Shao Kahn's palace. They fucking kill him. Turns out Shao Kahn and that Shao Kahn was a clone. Thanks, deception for that dumb thing. But but yeah. Basically, they become the emperors of Outworld, um, which is pretty oh, dope. They're, they're, yeah, they're fucking chads. I mean, yeah. And they go to no, Earthrealm no. to kill Liu Kang, which is really cool. And, and he's not a clone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, had to, just had to clarify. Uh... <laughs> um, but yeah, that intro, it's all shown in the intro. It's so cool. Like you just start off and yeah. he just killed like the two, like. The, the most important hero and the most important villain. Uh, actually, uh, like, our boy is, here, so. uh, well, most important villain other than Shinnok, but our boy here uh, snaps Liu Kang's neck and then eats his soul. Because fuck you. <laughs> yeah. That's very important because, um, I, I mean, Shao Kahn, the, if you bring it off by this point, there's no point keeping around past them. It's shake up to the status quo of MK that we kind of needed. Yeah, it because very, without it, it we good. would have just been stuck with the same Liu Kang, Shao Kahn, or a variation of Shao Kahn. Right. Like it, like MK Five was going to be that because Reiko was going to be revealed yeah. Shao Kahn and it's going to be Liu Kang Katana's kid, which um that feels very OC ish. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I like I, the I combat really kids, that. but um, if they did that, it, it wouldn't have really worked. I think <laughs> in oh, in that yeah, in yeah, those specific just... circumstances, right, um, right. Just having like one next gen character in isolation instead of a group of them that can bounce off each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like that's why that's why like uh like over at like PC for example like, that's why the Teen Titans work so well because it's like a bunch of younger superheroes and like sidekicks of older superheroes that can come together and interact with each other. Yeah, um, it's, not, it's not it's not just Robin. So yeah, these 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 are boys that are nice. They get up to some, a lot of shit. Um, one thing is like fucking enslaving Lime's village and though they make they force yeah. the villagers to make a palace. They also do like some little tournament thing for entertainment, I guess. Um uh, I think to like to like weed out the stronger souls or whatever to take Oh them. yeah, yeah. Although seemingly the winner was just for like a single soldier. D- it didn't really work, in my opinion, it's a little bit, but um yeah, it's worth mentioning. Yeah. They end up taking Lee's yeah. soul for um for actual ends of I'm gonna make it's like explosion and like she's fine after. Um, <laughs> it's it's strange, but yeah. Um, yeah. She's fine. 
She's fine. That one. And That's all. Totally. She's precious. <laughs> um, we love her. I, I kind of do still want to like just swap her to the top of S tier, but. <laughs> yeah, we can. But, um. Sung. Um, so Sung manages to get, like, find um, an outlet. I think they were hiding in, like, this um, forest. Um, it wasn't a film. The, um. The living for us, you know, a different one. Maybe the forbidden woods of one of the, the other one on the outward earth. Um, I don't know, yeah. but like they cut, they cover it in like Dead on woods, and I'm like, gone, yeah, yeah Shang Tsung finds him, and um, he's like, hey, um, oh yeah, he, find, he finds Molark and Draman, and he recruits them as like a contingency plan to deal with Quan Chi. Yeah, okay, I remember. Yeah, because Molark's there is actually under um. Shao, no, no, Shang Tsung's palace. Um, yes. The Dark Prison, which is established in Deception, yes. might as well it out, um, is yeah, also well, 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 in uh, the underground of um, Sung's palace. Um, yeah. Which is kind of, it's kind of, I guess maybe it's like, a ten, it's actually underneath like the Asabaf, because the palace is established after, mm-hmm. but we've also got like the Asabaf area, which his house is at. As <laughs> so I guess the Dark Prison is like under that, I guess is the idea. Um, because the Dark Prison yeah. statue have been around for a while because its lore is that um he, like Sung would keep like innocent people like trapped down there. Um yeah. he had he had like guards as well. I am guessing his mask guards. If I don't know. Yeah. I don't really care for it, but that's the only thing I can think of. I think, I think we even like see some mask guards like standing there. I thought maybe. Uh, no, in the dark prison. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Do you and, think and they'd still be uh, involved with some, even though we don't see him after him coupon? Right. But um, in deception, the dark prison is a hall of cameos, and that's fun. Yeah. Um. He has like a crusher and the guards sometimes like just put people in it for fun. Like it's pretty yeah, fucked up, but also pretty it's a cool. Torture chamber. Um. Yeah, and basically, like, the... manga, I think has the best like location lore connected to him. I think the palace like is definitely characters. my favorite um building in the franchise because there's so much. You have the um palace exterior that's uh, its own stage. Uh, right. You have the palace interior itself. You have the acid bath, which is like exterior, and also Sung's home, his actual house is also there. Then you've got Morlocks there somewhere underground, and then there's also the dark prison. There is a lot, uh, and also you could probably like incorporate like a like a a, a throne room, obviously. Um, like an MK1 callback, and it makes sense that it's in the past. Um, so there's already another location idea, but just yeah. one building. Um, uh, Moloch is in Shang Tsung's basement gaming. Yeah, presumably with drama, even though it's called Moloch's Lair. I'm yeah. guessing it's only called Moloch's Lair just for like the sake of gameplay because you fight Moloch there. Um, because probably his ending, which is canon, um, and he ends up and he ends up in like that. He ends up like finding Moloch's Lair, and then like Moloch and Charmin just fucking yeet him into a solid leader. Oh, um, yeah. 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 He gets a slow lead. Oh yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> Shang Tsung and Quan Chi create a portal like uh, to the heavens, portal and then they create a soul nado to take souls from right. from up the heaven. They connect a soul nado to it because they basically get like an infinite amount of souls. Yeah, they use us like supplied like fuel, like a lot of the um, army. Um, yeah. So yeah, like like basically, Sun re- like recruits um, Mulligan Drum because they hate Quan Chi and like he needs um, a plan for like because these two motherfuckers are gonna betray each other at some point. So he needs like some right. Like he needs like, has, like, has the red dragon in his corner. Yeah. And- and even gets as far as Movado ordering Shang Tsung to take or ordering Su Hao to take out Shang Tsung. And Shang Tsung has Moloch and Draman in his corner. Yeah. Also, and, Sung, and in his also ending, because... Sung, um I like like they were like Moloch and Drama promised mortals, so I'm guessing Sung like had the cards feed them, probably the prisoners from the dark prison, which is fucking wild. Like obviously Sung probably, like yeah, is yeah. like a evil motherfucker, but the dark prison is like another level. Um, it's it's crazy. Mm. Yeah, but wait, I, I didn't even mention um <laughs> about the dark prison. Like like most like the main purpose of it, like besides obviously just like being evil, <laughs> was one for souls. Obviously, can't get enough of them things. <laughs> And two, it was to just like fill out like the tournament. They just take people and force them on the island. 
which makes sense. Oh, oh shit, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that, hence why it's established before, like, it's a thing that's been around before the past. Right. So I'm guessing it was like beneath the Apple Right. It's, it's, it's sort of like an extension of how, again, the MK1 prequel comic, like Shang Tsung dupes Johnny into participating to give out worlds in EZW. Yeah. Because he thought Johnny was an idiot, and he was right. <laughs> My idea is also that there must be like a quota for like the amount of um, fives that can be there. I think yeah, I thought probably. it as like 50 or whatever. Um, so yeah, he just gets like, like, yeah, like, gets like there's some randoms. I, I, I can't remember what I did, but um, yeah. Um, That's fair. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then they, they, they beat the heroes and then betray each other. Yeah, <laughs> bad guys, you know. Yeah, I believe Shang Tsung ends up killing Kung Lao when when they when they beat up all the heroes and Quan Chi kills Katana. Uh, it doesn't matter because they come back anyway because Onaga is cool like that. Yeah, uh, and then they beat up and then they beat up Raiden and Shang Tsung does a cool fire snake thing. Uh, which okay, uh, energy constructs of animals are the only cool way to do animalities. Fight me. Yeah. Um, so they be Raiden, and then Sung looks at the animal. He's like, I want that. <laughs> um, they fight. You know what I love about um, the dis- no no he pulls out his divorce papers anyway. Uh, <laughs> that's a reference to an old meme that that uh, Jane here made on her DB nerd. Um, I just wanted to say. I, one thing I love about the Deception intro is that it's the only piece of MK media where Quan Chi just wearing Shinox amulet on his belt openly has actual consequences. <laughs> yeah. Just want um, to say that. Uh, yeah. So they fight each other, and Quan Chi comes out on top, which like kind of makes sense to me. Like they're probably about equal sorcery wise, but Quan Chi is definitely like physically stronger because he's not old. <laughs> physically. I mean, I mean, some, um, like. Like probably like he's not old at this point. Um, I mean, oh, even but... he he like fucking beats the fuck out of Shao Kahn in the Armageddon intro. <laughs> That's true. He's bawling in the Armageddon intro. He's yeah. like this bit where he's like almost at the top of the of the pyramid. And he like smacks off Molina and Shadinko, which mean bully. Oh yeah, he just like got massive fireball and takes out like five motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, and then Shao Kahn like comes right through it like. Hurling it like like with his hammer above him, like just jumping and shit. It's fucking crazy. And then fucking zombie Liu Kang shows up and they get into a fight. And he's like genuinely unsettled. Like he didn't think that that would come back around to get him. Like, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god. That shit was dope. Yeah. And then zombie Liu Kang kills him, I think. Zombie Dude, like, like he started. rapidly ages. <laughs> but for some reason it's cool but um yeah maybe the exposure to blaze's power was like fucking with the sorcery i don't know the Argan intro embodies very cool doesn't make sense so <laughs> yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah so yeah but yeah midway shang Tsung is awesome and chad and like does and, like most of his uh accomplishments feel deserved and, and make sense yeah also his armageddon he has an armageddon bio card one of the lucky yeah few um where yeah, um, like they, a, they explain how he's brought back um when he like right. aligned with Shao Kahn they did like like a oh, literal yeah. like soul contract thing so his soul right, just comes back to Shao Kahn every time Shao Kahn oh, yeah. oh, who's this motherfucker um he so yeah he brings him right. back um and then like they go slaughter Sundo which is fucking dumb like why can't you just yeah, like, like say it. some random motherfuckers or you know right. and, and that restores Shao Kahn to his full power Right. Like he, he's back in his prime. Up, <laughs> yeah, if they were doing it to set up a character motivation for Lee May, that would have been fine. But also, it's a, a like this kind of wanton slaughter of innocence like goes against Goro's entire fucking character. Yeah, Goro's also there because um, I guess like reasons. Um. <laughs> the deception character regression. He's just continuing to be yeah. on Shao Kahn's side because of that shit. Yeah, uh, let's see. You know, I mentioned that like Shang Tsung like mentored Goro, which is kind of cool, and it's kind of ignored. Like, yeah, like there's intrigue to their connection, but well. they never even there interact. Is, even in MK1, there is no MK1 adaptation where they interact. Yeah. I believe. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> weird. Uh, and I just want to real quickly say, in MK3, he's responsible for creating the Soul NATO and resurrecting Sindel. I just wanted to point that out because MK9 yeah. steals those two things and gives them the Quan Chi for no reason. He does the resurrection um, thing with um, Shadow Priest as well. You like some fucking cult ritual. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It becomes like a whole thing. Yeah. 
Um, hey, I don't uh, know what is. That's about, that's about. Oh wait, let's talk about his origin for a bit because that's kind of interesting. Oh yeah, that, 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 that. So, yeah. So the thing about Shang Tsung is that he's act, even though he's commonly associated with Outworld, he's well, he has Outworld heritage in his like in his like family, but he's actually uh, from Earthrealm originally. Yeah, it seems uh, to be that like, one of his parents is an outworld or one's an earth realm. Hence why a lot of his, like, like a lot of the time he is, his status will be earth realm slash outworld. I think the 3 ds did that a lot. Right, um, right exactly. And that's, um, yeah, so he's actually connected to earth realm, though he, he doesn't care about that. Yeah, um, he, so he originally like, lived in earth realm, it right. seems. Like, he sort of betrayed earth realm to join Shao Kahn uh, at some point a long, long time ago. Uh, this is the only bit of Shaolin Monks that I'm going to mention because it's relevant. Uh, there's a there's a bit in Shaolin Monks during its version of the attack on the Wuxi from MK2 where Raiden uh, calls Shang Tsung traitor. So he they might have known each other like personally before Shang Tsung did his evil link. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I gotta go on a quick kind of I hate like like the weird like amount of times like like characters are brought up as like like traitors to the realm it, like i don't really like it it doesn't really yeah. work like like they seem to bring it up even if you're just living in a different realm like baracho gets it a lot in mkx like what the fuck it doesn't work um well, i guess it's because he's like trading enemies of, of, of shao Kahn, but like he wants our to be free ultimately like i get why like shao Kahn loyalists would call him a traitor but like shao Kahn is dead at that point so like he doesn't it's weird. i guess it makes sense i just find it weird it is yeah, a I weird so. insult. Like, oh, you betrayed your realm, you fucker. Um, yeah. yeah. And I guess it's fine now that I think about it, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, no, no, I get that it's annoying. I get that it's fine. Yeah, it's used to, like, vilify characters like Tanya even after they've, you know, changed a lot. Um, but what was I going to... Yeah, yeah. So his his back. So yeah, that happened, and then I think like the elder gods. I don't know if this is still canon anymore. This is like old lore, but like the elder gods like cursed him as punishment, and that's why he has to feed off of souls because otherwise he'll just die. Yeah, it's really weird because obviously the soul magic is like his main power. Thing. And, like, that's so why all the elder gods that. did was make him stronger, and I guess that's kind of like a cool little thing. But the thing is. The Elder Gods, like, like, because they're just dumbasses, and, like, everything they do doesn't really make sense, they just do shit, and it's dumb. Like, 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 the idea that Shang Tsung took a curse and, like, fucking used it for, like, his own means, that is cool. The problem is, the curse at its core doesn't make sense, because the curse literally means, hey, you can become immortal if you want to. <laughs> well, I think, I thought, my, my interpretation was that it was to explain why he needs to absorb souls to retain his, uh, his, uh, what's the, not, well, you, yeah, youthfulness, but, like, there's a, his longevity, rather than just, uh, getting some kind of long age, long aging enhanced en enchantment, like, Edenian magic or something like that. But, no, because the problem is, like, he's lived for, like, hundreds, maybe thousands of years because of this curse. I don't know if, like, they, rap like, they suddenly rapidly sped up his aging. I don't know, like, how that works. But either way, he he now has a motive to just fucking murder people and steal their souls thanks to the Elder Gods. And, yeah, um, yeah of course he's going to do it to remain immortal. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, it doesn't work. I'm not I think like, it only, you could... It only works if, if Shang Tsung had, at some point, long in his in his past, had some kind of morality and he was like horrified by it at first but then he got like super desensitized to the game of monster yeah and i think it needs some more that. application it probably needs like a new explanation altogether but then i'm yeah. about making new explanations for things that don't need changing but uh, yeah yep. and, um, i don't think i have an explanation for him real one actually because i haven't explored his past yet um mm -hmm. So I'll you know, think about stuff for that. But yeah, I do, I do not like the idea, but at least it's some explanation, I guess. I would have got the dumbasses cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so, are you still there? Yeah. Okay. Right, so then he's in MK9 as a jobber and he doesn't do anything. 
Yeah, he does literally nothing. <laughs> now, <laughs> most of true. his accomplishments from the trilogy games are transferred over to Quan Chi for no reason. It's mostly just a series of Shao Kahn getting progressively mad at him before Shao Kahn just kills him and like absorbs his energy and gives it to Shindel. Yeah, like like he just and me like just fucking absorbs him. Like what the fuck? Why doesn't he just do this to everyone? It like well. Well, maybe it's because I mean, okay, okay, I don't. You, if you I, do a I hypothetical, then that's not an actual explanation. They have no, not no, explained this ability. I, I know, I know, it's not an actual explanation. I was just trying to come up with a hypothetical because I think, I think, uh, coming up with hypotheticals like this is interesting. Um, hypothetically, you could say that Shao Kahn is able to do that to Shang Tsung specifically because of Shang Tsung buying his soul to him. Hypothetically. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I mean, I find him like a really OP like soul steal, but you can't just do it like instantly. That's got like a whole right. process. Right, exactly. Because, like, because if you've forgotten a lot OP. that Shao Kahn is like has soul magic of his own and like he's presumably right. better at it than Shang Tsung, even if it's more of a Shang Tsung gimmick. He, he, he like taught Shang Tsung most of his sorcery, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, seems that way. Um again, like his backstory, he, ha- he has like a lot of like Oh law, but it could do a bit more details, obviously. Um, yeah. That's the only thing I really want from this character. Um, and also for another role that isn't dumb as fuck. <laughs> yep, we're getting to it. Yes, uh, we don't really do anything in MK9, so should we just move on to MK11? Yeah, I mean, MKX shows him an Emax ending and just fucking slips his soul up like this naked Shang Tsung. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, weird. Very weird. Um, yeah, and Ken okay. um, he's not the main story, but then he's DLC. He's all from the oh. crypt, and like he's kind of cool there because he's like kind of like guys who, hey, he's, please he's loot my place. island, please rob me, go ahead, make my day. Reenact, uh, <laughs> reenact Kano's MK1 ending. <laughs> um, yeah, which was speaking of like, like I, I, I'm gonna say the crypt does a good job at like showing like his island. There's a lot of locations that don't actually make sense, but um, I, I think it's like a decent enough layout. I don't think yeah. Sun Zion has definitely got a very overused location, but it's definitely the best we see. But Shang Tsung just has like yeah. banging locations, like his island, his um, um, his palace. The flesh bits are very underwhelming, but um, you could make that cool because you <laughs> you think they would. I know it's kind of like a generic room in MK9, which I'm fine with, but yeah, I I know people would expect like some a bit wilder because <laughs> it's not in the weirdest like thing he has because there's, there's still the dark prison <laughs> um, wait what are we talking about I'm sorry I lost my train of thought the flesh fits oh yeah I, the flesh fits in MK9 are weird like it, it looks too techy yeah but like, it feels like it should be more like solar sorcerer's cauldron yada 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 like, like the way like we, we see it in MK versus DC unfortunately it's gross but like it's, it's gross because he's got like Naked Melina clones like hanging on him, and it's uh, yeah, yeah, because like the, the the ending is like he uses he, he okay, so because of the the multiverse shit, he like gets a, 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 uh, some of like Shazam's blood and he uses it to make like a super duper Tarkatan. Um, that's it, that's the ending. <laughs> and the MK versus DC endings are like really, really basic. Like, like, uh, Green Lantern's one is just the Pyramid of Argus has ended up in the DC universe for some reason. <laughs> like, it's, it's, yeah, it's not great. Um, yeah, so it's the Crimp, like, so it's like a couple of things, Mr. Shang Tsung. Um, one thing is that he has to forge. Um, it's like he explains that, um, you know, he's a sorcerer, but he also, he's also an inventor, which is kind of neat, albeit the forge is like fucking crazy. Uh, oh, so yes. yeah, it's it's a bit odd, but I like the idea of the hobbies. Like, sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the other thing is like the Naknada God Shrine, which yeah, this is fucking wild. But um, it does have dialogue where Sung says, "Hey, as, as a child, I used to um, pray to the gods, but now I realize they only care about tribute. Um, this doesn't really align with any law, but um." I guess that's some lore about Shang Tsung as a kid. What? Oh, like he used to. He, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. He used to like worship the elder gods, but then he like became like. Uh, then he was like sort of 
driven away from them when he was out. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. Which is a Nine. valid conclusion. But um, yeah, paying like paying the gods for stuff, that's not an actual MK thing. And I hope I hope gods... never all knows that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. The, the elder gods don't demand tribute. The only reason that anybody would pay would pay tribute to the elder gods is just out of their religious customs, not anything that the elder gods want. Yeah, but it, is it is kind of like how it works in the real world, presuming that God does exist. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's the crypt. Um, speaking of being an inventor. There's a little something else he has on his land. Firstly, in Gorus Lair, there's a soul well for some reason. Um, it's like, where he stores uh, it's souls. Like, it's, like a, it's, like a, it's like a backup supply, I assume. I guess. It's, it's not really explained, it's just, hey, souls are here. And guess what else is there? Gronica's yes, crown. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, Shang Tsung made Gronica's crown despite it being, like, Gronica design. And it being chronic, let me explain what the crown does. The wearer gains godlike powers, which, aftermath de- details, it makes you as strong as a titan. Titans are implied to be, well, not even implied, that like, like literally fucking Dominic Chincholo. He even said, oh, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're fucking stronger than the one being. So you're telling me Shang Tsung was able to create a crown that, ha- that is fueled purely by soul magic, which, you know, he always uses soul magic. Like, any soul that goes into him, that is empowering him. I don't know why he needs to, like, keep some shit there yep. in this soul well, like, when he could just I take all the souls. I don't know, like, like what, they don't explain what makes the crown, like, give him these special properties when they literally say it just runs on soul magic. Um, yeah. But, yeah. If so it's something to, like, siphon souls to strengthen himself better, like, sure, I guess? Um, yeah. But yeah, so the crown, it, lets, it floats on your head. So yeah, he's learned how to make um, objects fucking float, okay? Um, and it, tur- it like, like for Shang Tsung specifically, it turns your clothes into chronica style clothes. I, I, I like, like I, I know he's a sorcerer, I mean, but how the fuck? I mean, drip, but yeah, how? <laughs> and also, again, it's still chronica's design. It looks, yep. it's just chronica themed stuff. And the same Shang Tsung yeah. made it, and um, yeah, it gives him like, it gives him like powers, powers like a titan. And Liu Kang's plan, oh my god, Liu Kang's plan, as we could, is so dumb because it turns Shang Tsung into a being that is stronger than the strongest beings in the universe. Oh yep. my god! Um, let Shang Tsung get godlike power. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. We're talking about aftermath. Here we yeah. Go. Um. Then there, there's also um the fact that um what was I gonna say um. The crown, the crown. What about the crown? Um, <laughs> um, there's got to be something else about it. <laughs> um, it's oh, you needed to control the hourglass. As a yes, yeah, yeah, is going, yeah, yeah. It's not establishing base eleven. Base eleven doesn't really treat us at point. It's just like another thing in Chronicles plan, and all those things are like kind of like irrelevant. It, it's just like a reason to have like filler points in the story. I think it's um, to siphon like more energy or whatever, so that she can do the time reset faster or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, it's, also, it's Chronicles plan. So. I, I, that's what I was gonna say. Um, how did Shang Tsung make the crown? Like, 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 did he have it? Like, did he always have it before Chronicles Rival? Because the implication here is that it was a new creation since Chronicles doesn't have it. And that, but Shang Tsung was cast into the void, they established. So did he just make yeah. this crown in the void for Chronica? And then didn't give it to Chronica. He put it on the island, you know, it's for Chronica. Jane, what? Jane, just, 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 look up the craft, just look up the crafting recipe on Planet Minecraft. <laughs> I don't Sorry. get it. I don't get it. It makes no sense. It's it's it the really dumbest does. thing in MK. It's obviously a Chronica artifact. She should have created it. And if she didn't create it, Giris should have created it. Yeah. And, <laughs> it's, and I don't even mind like you needing it to control the hourglass. I think it's an extra step of added functionality that's, that prevents someone from it from tapping into its very OP power, you know, like immediately. But uh, yeah, it's just the fact that it. it's not like something Chronica just has anyway. Uh, they, and I'm pretty sure the only reason they established this because this wasn't established until aftermath. Like, I had no connection right. with this song until aftermath. I don't think they um, needed a reason to 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 have the story happen. 
yeah, they need they need a reason to make like the crown relevant enough to like do bath math, and they also need a reason for Changsun to be OP for the last chapter. That's why they yeah. did all this, and it's very weird because aftermath was made right after the the base story was. So it's not like they like thought of any plans after this ties in. They had this as a plan all along. You know, it doesn't feel like it because the storytelling is so bad. So NRS is terrible at follow up. They always have been. That so like follows like the trio of Shang Tsung, Fusion, and Nightwolf, um, which is like kind of cool, like guess, but also very weird and very contrived because it's just a DLC yeah. character specifically. Yeah. Uh, Fusion and Nightwolf has some good connections, and also I like how like they don't trust Sung, obviously. Um, that's nice, <laughs> and it's just oh, a whole bunch cool. of filler fights that don't really matter about um, um, about hey, it's Shang Tsung, get him, get him, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even on yeah, it's weird. Even on Shao Kahn's side, the collectors like, um, Sung, why are you with Earth Realms? I'm I'm killing you all now, honestly. Um, so yeah, nobody is safe from the filler fights. Um, no, they're, they're running wild for like you literally every, for literally every chapter in this story, pretty much. Um, <laughs> um, because yeah, yeah, the first three chapters are filler. I mean, I guess the Setron fights like relevant. They they want you to think it's relevant. They don't treat Setron as another threat. They just say she's a threat. You know, she has literally no wins. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, hey. And, and Setron can be defeated by anyone who just puts the Soul Crown on. Yeah, by the way, Liu Kang, by God, Liu Kang didn't murder Shang Tsung because apparently he needed Shang Tsung. Even though Liu Kang could have just gone to the. How? To How? the crown himself. I, yeah, exactly. I, you didn't need him. But yeah, that's that's the explanation we have. It doesn't actually make sense, but it, you know, they, they think it's an explanation. If they say anything, it counts as an explanation in the rest of mind. Um, so, yeah, like, like come um, chapter 16, um, Sintar and Shao Kahn, uh... they established that Shang Tsung has made a plan with these two. Um, I don't know when, because he's always been with Fujin and Nightwolf and the other heroes. I don't know how he managed to orchestrate this when he had literally no chance to because everyone was fucking watching um, him. Um, uh, 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 Jane, um, the Shang Tsung with the heroes was, uh, was a clone. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, they're 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 yeah, another thing it. about this Shang Tsung is the fact that because it's considering like that old rock from the past, even though this is old Shang Tsung, I'm guessing it's just a design and actually, uh, this is actually Shang Tsung from MK2, like all the other past characters, right? Um, yeah. Yet he knows he everything that happens after his, like after his death, like after his death and whatnot, like he knows all this. There's even Delta. an dialogue where Shao Kahn is like, Sudo Louise, and Shang Tsung's like, so you can transfer her my power. And, Shang Tsung, and Shao Kahn like tries to be, like, play it off and is like, Wherever did you get that idea? Like, <laughs> that's a better okay. Shao Kahn voice. But, um, but, um, Thank you. I, I do do a better <laughs> Shao Kahn voice than, than the actor. I do a better Shao Kahn voice too. Yo, based. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but but this yeah, and, and then I've seen stuff like like apparently on Twitter they say it's like an alternate timeline Shang Tsung. Why don't you clarify this when literally everyone what? else from MK two? Um, so like, yeah, I don't count that, especially when it's established on Twitter. I do not care for Twitter law. I care for in game law. Right. You fucking exactly. idiot, Dominic. Also, also, the whole premise of this of this story would lend itself to including a lot more alternate timeline versions of characters, but they don't do that. Yeah. Also, having alternate timeline Shang Tsung just raises more questions, so I'd rather not get into that. But anyway, it's dumb. It's really dumb. And basically, his whole reason for wanting to restore Ronan and else, well, kills you all. Like, 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 like. Hey, man. Um, you do realize that Slavendal only killed you all like like not that she's a weak fight or anything but they play her up uh, as if like the mk3 massacre was her at a regular power level and that they need her to be set on are you telling me fujin nightwolf and and shang sun three very powerful and characters are way, probably more credible than sin sin <laughs> by Honestly. the way by the way by the way by the way the guy whose power was transferred to Sindel to allow her to do that yeah, exactly. So he he would know that. If he, if he happens to know about a massacre, he would know about that stuff. Why he knows about his death, that's not never explained. But yeah, yeah, but it turns out it's all part of his great plan to like align with Seven Dow and Shang Kahn. Even though Seven Dow apparently didn't make it open, that she loves Shang oh, Kahn for no, some reason. Not to align to them to get them to work for him. Yes, 
Like, like he's literally giving Shao Kahn orders. I don't care how yeah, dumb you make a shit with Shao Kahn betrayal. It does not make sense. Aftermath did not fix Shao, Shao Kahn. And we got Shao Kahn after this, and oh my, oh my god, god, I can't be hell. People act like it fixed him just because... He know, won five. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and like, people complain about, like, MK11 Shao Kahn's power skiing in, like, the base story. That was never the problem. He beats Kotal's ass multiple times, even with Kotal, like, cheating... Like, like he like throws sand in his eyes. He does like dirty tactics and whatnot, and yeah, like he still manages to fucking cripple that motherfucker. So he's still treated as credible. The only loss he takes is to Katana, which is actually which pretty is... fair. But anyway, he, oh, he should save that for Shao Kahn. Liu yeah. Kang can beat him. She can beat him, and it's like good resolution for her fucking character. Yeah, but it took yeah, took I, everything from her. I have an aftermath critique of every chapter. Each chapter I cover for like Ooh, half an hour. So yeah, look at that. I'm basically covering things up here. But yeah, we cover it. They said like so they did a plan to like go to the keep and then Shang Tsung like puts the crown on. I don't know why Shao Kahn would mm-hmm. still trust him. Allow now. Yeah. And then, obviously, what a shock. Shang Tsung betrays him. Oh, my God. Top 10 oh shocking God. Mortal Kombat moments. No way. Yeah. Um, and then he kills Chronic Car as well. And um, then Fire God Luke Kang shows up and is like, oh, I had this great plan. And Shang Tsung's like, lol, what? You just gave me so much power, you idiot. I'm going to kill you now. And then Shang Tsung kills Luke Kang because that's what should have happened. Because, logically, Fire God Luke Kang's plan was so dumb that it should have backfired. So, yeah, Shang Tsung's ending way becomes a giant because he has a giant fetish, I guess. Um, that's the canon ending. Um, I don't care. Um... So, what, 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 where do you want to rank this guy? <laughs> oh my fucking god, yes. So, yeah, I just wanted to sum up. Yeah, Aftermath was his most forced role. So, started at, like, people started really sucking him off after that, which is really annoying. Oh my god, Kari um, Gagawa is such a good voice. Oh my god. He is the perfect Shang Tsung actor. No one else can play Shang Tsung. Oh my oh, god. This Shang Tsung is so perfect. The they really the did him justice. Show. They made him important. Oh my god. Such genius to make Luke Gang and Shang Tsung the, 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 the main rivalry again. Oh my god. Well done, Harrell. Oh wow. Great job. Oh. Luke Kang, Luke Kang and Shang Tsung is only a rivalry at the very end of MK1 and at the very beginning of Deadly Alliance before Liu Kang fucking dies. Yeah, and I guess when zombie Luke Kang shows up, I'm again. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, but yeah, it should not be like the most important feud, obviously, because no, not supposed to be the most important characters. Shang Tsung is not the most important villain. <laughs> yeah, he is. No, no, he is introduced as the number two to a bigger guy. One, his 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 biggest appearance before that, he needed to team up with another prominent villain who was also previously the number two to another bigger dude. Who's right there, uh, Shinnok over there, right there on the us. And they both have their plan thwarted when they are due to the the sudden appearance of another bigger villain. Yeah. So no, no, he is not the biggest villain in the franchise. No, he is not the ultimate mastermind. Like in this one fucking DLC story, he managed to become more forced than Quan Chi ever did. Yeah, uh, it's worth pointing out as well that the similarities between Shang Tsung and Quan Chi are a good thing because they're still very much unique to each other. And the similarities are just really good because it makes the Daily Alliance so much better and makes so much more sense. It's like literally perfect and it's a great way to have these two be the main antagonists. You can't make them the main antagonists of like the main story. Obviously you have side stories like mythologies. Quan Chi is basically the main antagonist there and he's really cool there. Um, look, because again, in terms of solo appearances, Crunchy has way better solo appearances. Yeah. Um, just looking at Fargies. Um, and yeah, Shang Tsung doesn't really have that. Um, they need to be, they need to do Alliance. You can't do anyone else for the Daily Alliance. Start making Daily Alliance references whenever you have two villains team up. It doesn't work. The Daily Alliance is just these two guys. Stop referencing it every time you don't actually do it. Oh my god. Um, yeah, so oh, there's also. <laughs> there's also, I guess we should might, we should probably cover the movies where he's meh, um, overrated. Um, um, in the 95 movie, he's, he's well performed, but doesn't really feel like Shang Tsung, but 
he's yeah. probably a character. He's fine. Yeah, I, I forgot Shang Tsung wore leather jackets. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, Stealing Movada's ring. And also, they like, keep quoting him. Like, your sword is mine, just makes sense. You know? Like, sure. Yeah. Also, um, it's, a, it's a misquote. It's a misquote. He says your brother's soul is the yeah. nightmare that Liu Kang has. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know. Also, um, yeah. It has begun, which MK11 uses a bunch of times, even in the same story. And then, even in That's gameplay, awesome. Shang Tsung will do just regular combo strings and then say, it has begun. He sounds like Terminator when he does it, genuinely. Like, like for some reason, he has like a really weird accent. Then I don't know what happened there. But yeah, it's really weird. If you know, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, he also says it a million times in 2021, I think. Probably. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, 2021 Shang Tsung is literally just bootleg 95 Shang Tsung. Uh, which yeah. 95 Shang Tsung is bootleg game Shang Tsung. <laughs> I said it. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's also a Conquest uh, Shang Tsung, who's a bit of a weirdo, and he's basically spends all his time in the Cobalt Mines because Shao Kahn doesn't like him. But this does, this does like, actually have, like, flashbacks showing, like, Shao Kahn, like, teaching um, some sorcery, though, which oh, I do like. Um, but yeah, besides I that, I can't really like much about it. I like Because it covers his backstory a lot more than, I guess, everything else. And that's kind of interesting. Like, he has, like, an ex-girlfriend. Kind of wild. Well, I guess. We talked about her previously. Yeah. Um, but yeah, most of the time he's just in the um, car mines. Um, it's actually like Quan Chi and Shang Tsung actually do like a bit of an alliance here. Um, yeah, it's not an area as cool as day alliance, but it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty cool how um, this ended up being like a like a um, I see a main game thing, just like like right. just like five years later or something. Um, yeah, that's pretty. Good. It's cool. I did that. Nice. Let's see. Um, Generally sexist writing of that show, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Speaking of him being a creep, twenty twenty one, he's fucking bland and has no personality. But also, the Nitara thing exists, and we talked about that already when we talked about Nitara in a previous part. And I don't want to bring it up again, so that's it. Yeah, yeah. In the in in the Legends movies, he's just like fucking crazy for no reason, right? Yeah, he's a lunatic and seemingly a Shao Kahn loyalist, um, which doesn't work for yeah, him. Weird. It's weird. Um, it's too weird to probably describe, but it's definitely not good. He also randomly has like this curse thing, like he just on Liu Kang, but the curse actually makes okay. him stronger. Um, it's kind of like how okay. Shang Tsung was cursed by the Elder Gods, and the curse didn't work. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Yep. Um, yep. The but yeah, that, that's about it. Um, I love the fact that Liu Kang spared Shang Tsung for like a really petty, petty reason. Like, <laughs> no, you will live knowing that I kicked your ass. Like, what, bro? Did that's a fuck out. The thing is, I'm fine with him. Like, if Lu, if this Liu Kang had a no kill policy, that works. But he's yeah. killed random criminals, like, like just like pay black dragon goos, but won't kill Shang Tsung. And yeah, yeah that's dumb. Yep, it's dumb. It's so dumb. I, I hate it. I hate yeah, it. That's just about it with Shang Tsung. That's about it. That's about it with Shang Tsung. So, yeah, very good villain when written well, but also can become very annoying and overrated and it's just. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think I don't think he's D tier bad. Like I don't think he's a wasted concept per se because things like David Alliance that get him right do exist. Yeah, there's um, a little deception like really cool. Uh, maybe meet Shijinko. Yeah, yeah, he's cool in Deception Conquest. Yeah, he's like, his he's best like, voice is in that game, by the way. Yes. <laughs> he's been um he's been keeping one step ahead of Kenshi who's trying to go after him, and he's like, ha ha ha, Shijinko, oh you. Oh, you've thought about kill, uh, beat me up since you were a kid? Oh, bring it, bring it, motherfucker. Uh, mm, basically. Yeah. yeah, and he, like, lets Shujinko and Kenshi into the tournament and stuff. It's the MK1 tournament, I should say, and it's it's kind of fun. He's also in the Forces of Darkness scene in Armageddon Conquest, where he points out to Shao Kahn, he's like, Hey, uh, Onaga gets the power, he could he could overthrow you. And Shao Kahn, like, no, like, uh, Shao Kahn, like, straight up is just like, I'll take that chance. Like, I... So I'm kind of just like I bet. <laughs> uh, that's kind of that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, that's it. So I don't I don't think he's D tier wasted potential, but I also don't think he's B tier solid because aftermath is so fucking terrible. Um, so I I moved him on mine. I put him on the, at the very top of C tier. Oh okay. <laughs> Does that work for you? Does that make sense? Yeah, probably. 
Um, sure. A very mixed okay. bag. I don't know. <laughs> That's oh, okay. the thing. I really don't know. Yeah. I just, I just think because if, if it's just from one portrayal, we could just, I could just like make a separate version. Um, if it's just like a single thing. Winger. Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't, don't know. Like, his actual personality isn't different. It's mostly just evolving, stupid. And we also yeah. Yeah. About it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's <laughs> stick to this then. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just stick to it this way. If, if, we, if we were going to do that, we probably should have clicked on it uh, a bit ago. But it's fine. It's not a big deal. Yeah. You can put other characters higher who are ten- who are like mixed bags, but I think with Shang Tsung, it's more damaging. Yeah. And also, like, Chang Tsung has peak, it's usually because of his association with her characters. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. And then there's a lot of backstory good. issues, and uh, he, he just needs yeah. some more. Which, some more a big, which is concerning, because obviously he's appeared a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, we're talking about a villain who appears you know. too much. You know, Shao Kahn. Yes. I can't do this, man. I can't fucking do it's this. Official. You suck. Anyway, yeah, Shao Kahn. Okay, so Shao Kahn is, you know, the Emperor of Outworld, the Overthrow of Naga, blah, 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 blah. He was formerly the Protector God of Outworld. I have to state that because they contradicted and they don't mention it anymore and they act like it's not a thing. But he was a Protector God or is still one. It's confusing. He doesn't really have, like, a lot of the normal Protector God traits and powers. So, like, maybe the Elder Gods took it away. Um, he also tapped into Outworld's life force to get more power and that's why our world is a bit barren um so that's kind of neat um, yeah he sh- turned it into the things that, are purple and... like, like, that people wouldn't already know um also he's a massive creep in mk11 and modern stuff a lot um so just make him a romantic and asexual please he he, he forced sindel to marry him for like a political gambit that's how i explain it in my fanfic um uh, he's please, a massive you know, idiot in the unrest stuff Stop making him horny. Yes, in the NRS game, he's a massive fucking idiot. I do not uh, like wait, wait, wait. massive, smarty Shao Kahn simultaneously. Though. Both yeah, no, versions no. of Shao Kahn are incredibly overrated. Right. Then he's stated now. <laughs> it's the same thing as, uh, right, it's the same thing as Shang Tsung. Like, he shouldn't be too forced either. Um, yeah. uh, I end up being too right. forced when he was around post MK3. Yes. This is when the character yes. went on a downward, went, keep going downhill. Yes. Has not yes. gotten any better, and he's made a lot of appearances yeah. since. He's gotten worse. Um, um, wait, wait, Jane, I just want to ask you something real quick. You're absolutely sure that this is not a clone? I'm sorry. I, I have to make sure. Okay, Shao Clone is F tier. Get out of the way. Shao Kahn oh, um, is also yeah, pretty sure. low, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, yeah, so he's a really he's a really good villain when he's like the big conqueror man during MK2 and 3. Yeah, he's he's all, he's like really cool there in the original MK2 and 3. Not in the MK9 version cuz he's a dumbass. Uh and he's also just kind of boring in the legends movies, but he's not like bad, I guess. It's it's fine. It's whatever. Um and Annihilation he's kind of fun. Um he's Shinnok's son, which is weird, but like other than that he's fun. Uh He's yeah. remembered he's a so, god. Yeah. Yep. The clone thing that we've that we keep making fun of. Yeah, he's he let the clone and Decker killed by the Deadly Alliance and blah 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 blah, and then he comes back and then he retakes Outworld for a bit. But yeah, it's it's stupid. He he should have just died at the end of MK3, and he only should have come back in Armageddon. He he does nothing in Deception. Uh, MK9 does well. Okay, there's a whole fucking retcon where they act like he won Armageddon, even though Onaga fucking bit his head off. Do 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 you want to go more into that, or have we ranted about it enough times? Uh, I could I'll come out quickly. Um, basically, obviously, in the Armageddon intro, Shang Tsung kicks uh, <laughs> Shao Kahn's ass, um, kicks him back, Onang just shows up, just takes him, you hear Shao Kahn screaming, then suddenly silence, paired with a crunching noise, implying Onaga just chomped his head. Um, and even if he didn't, he flew away with that motherfucker. And it's Onaga. Shao Kahn Miles cannot away. be Onaga. If you no, think that, yeah, you're a fucking him. idiot and get off this video now. Um, no. But uh, yeah, yes, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so you're telling me he managed to regrow his head, managed to escape Onaga, managed to run back to the pyramid just in time to take up Blaze and Taven. Two characters who could probably beat Shao Kahn anyway. They 
Yeah, they could. Because there's this comes in for, hey, well, if this current hunt plays part. The thing is, Blaze could kick most of these guys' asses. It's Blaze. He is so fucking powerful. I, like, I, I do not see Shang Kong actually beating him. I could buy into it, but no, no one, especially when there's not, there's so many other characters. Like, literally, everyone wants to kill him. There's so many characters who are higher power scaling, even yes. like, characters like Shang uh, Kong alone seem to be like stronger yeah. and better warriors than Shang Kong. He's just kind of like swinging wildly, being just a yeah. massive, uh, idiotic brute. Uh, um, Chameleon and Onaga are specifically dedicated to trying to make sure that Shao Kahn does not get the power. Yeah, they just want him gone. <laughs> There's no one who could have got the power. He was back into a corner. He had done all these shitty contrived plans to get to this point, only to realize he'd made so many enemies that there was no way that he could do anything. Mm -hmm. um, which, yeah, yeah. Um, Tell your lies, he's killed, but no, he made a clone. Even though I don't know why this clone would be subservient to him, especially when you'd assume you have the same personality traits as him. No one explains. Yep. How he got high match to clone himself, I don't know why he knows how to do it. Um, but yeah, yeah he if did. He how to do, if he knew how to do it, why did why did why did why did Shang Tsung have to do the making Melina thing? Yeah, there's also the fact that um, you know, if if this Shao Kahn was willing to uh, die for him, why doesn't he just make an army of himself? That's a good point. Um, so yeah, it's very terrible. It's probably the worst thing in the midway timeline. Possibly, yeah. like it just it, it is such NRS levels of stupidity, and they do it just to bring Shao Kahn back next game so he can proceed to ruin more characters like Goro by association. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they just yeah. bring up like a bunch of contrived stuff, like how he sent Noob to assassinate Goro. No explanation as to why Noob is willing to help Shao Kahn when this is a time when um, he's probably doing his own thing. Um, because yeah. Shin yeah, is gone. That. Right, I was going to say, even before that, Noob Saibot is primarily a Shinnok servant, so... Yeah, he was only helping Shao Kahn because Shinnok told him to. But Shinnok's no longer around by saying lines. So he has no reason to help Shao Kahn, especially when Deception establishes he's doing his own thing now. Yeah, it's it's dumb. Yeah, it's, it's never it's dumb. Really dumb. Yeah, he really didn't, he really didn't need to... There's the fact that, like, it's kind of cool to see, but at the same time, he's so pathetic. Like, his only eyes are Reptile and Kano, who's a general of his armies. There's probably also a few other characters, like, Reiko should yeah. be eyes of him at this time, and it brings up, like, questions as to why Reiko would serve Shinnok at this time and not Shotgun. Like, Wait. his existence, thought... him being alive after oh. MK3, brings up so many questions, yeah. and it's just so unnecessary. His existence should not be a thing. He should be dead in MK3, yeah. not the Liu Kang, Liu Kang as a right. Shao Kahn for this, like, once again, is very boring. Uh, like, yeah. like, like, that yeah, whole really feud is. is really lame. Like, I get him being him in MK2, obviously, but after that, I don't give a fuck. There are so many people who live in Outlaw who are still more. Um, Raiden as well, you know, uh, it's just like, is Shao Kahn this is either Raiden or Liu Kang at least? MK11 shaped up and that fucking Katana actually <laughs> beat him. Yes. Thank you. So that's more of a personal beef with it. Um, only for Ash have to ruin it by having Shao Kahn literally like ruin like the whole message of uniting Outworld by yeah. saying, "Hey, I'll give yeah. you money," while also beating a bunch of characters who shouldn't he who shouldn't be able to beat him, who he shouldn't be able to beat. Um, Kathy, Johnny, uh, Sanya. Um, it, well, it, he doesn't beat Katana. Um, it, 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 but he beat uh, Liu Kang. Yeah. Like what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. If Liu Kang is supposed to be able to beat Shao Kahn 1v1, I'm pretty sure, we, I already said this, Katana can therefore beat him. One. Also, Katana, like, would know how he fights because she was with him for a bit, and she's, like, definitely faster than him, so those are both big pluses in her corner. Yeah, I do not the assumption that Katana is oh, incapable of beating him. Shao Kahn. Considering that he's about equal to Liu Kang, like sure he didn't win like the Shaolin tournament to actually go to the mm -hmm. island, but like especially when Shao Kahn just had a bunch of fights on the way to Sea Blood, you know, it couldn't go now by talking yeah. to Liu Kang, so it just doesn't work. And people aren't like to save yeah. the character because yeah, he fucking wins, but no, none of these wins wow. make sense. Like, no. even Cassie and Johnny is questionable because MK established they have powers right. that make them immune to god shit. Shao Kahn is a god. I know MK11 forgot this, but yeah. <laughs> Except when they don't. 
winning fights does not make a character good. That's not all it's about. Yeah, they're and not, Shao Kahn is not, not wrestlers. Yeah, he and Shao Kahn is not has someone punchable motherfucker. Than just that, but like you get what I mean. If Shao Kahn is not someone punchable motherfucker, many characters can no. be him, both heroes and villains. He he is like in terms of, like the main main antagonist, he's probably the least credible threat. And kind of thing of it, like, like he has the most allies just because, like, his I like reach and all. But the thing is, like, like he's constantly one up. Shinnok is way stronger. He's most powerful Shinnok. magic user in the franchise. He could easily kick Shao Kahn's ass. Um, Onaga yeah. is literally it's like yeah. his existence is Shao Kahn, but better. Shao Kahn had to poison him to be. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. Onaga is fucking crazy. I, th- I, th- I think Onaga and Delia could probably rival Shinnok sorcery wise, but that's neither here nor there. Um, the thing is, Shinnok's done so much shit. He's literally, he actually changed the yeah. shape, like, like he's literally changed the appearance with magic of an entire realm. The Never Realm being infinite as well. Keep in mind. That's true. Um, so yeah, yeah he he's crazy. done so Shinnok much that he has to be the most powerful magic user Probably. from from like actual uh, like yeah. proof that we've seen. Um, that makes sense. Okay, I understand now. Yeah, Onaga is just tough. like. Okay, hey, does Shao Kahn have a legendary, undefeatable army of zombie samurai? I don't think so. No, he has the Khan Guard, which is massive. And that's the thing, he just has a massive empire that once it falls apart, he is a nobody. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And it is Armageddon, and he fucking wins, and then he goes fucking crazy because there's no one left to challenge him anymore. Yeah, um... So yeah, I I see it. How I see it, he shouldn't be around after entry because clearly it's not good for him. Especially when there's other villains who are more important around this time, and his constant existence, you know, he has so many enemies, just makes makes it very contrived. Um, yeah. And just forces to have it by keeping around. What should happen is MK2 can Blue Kang beam whatever it's still a tournament story to establish him. Um, but MK3, yeah. you can do some wild shit. Um, in Reborn, I, I have him absorb the souls of a Solnado. Um, thus, yeah. this, this, this is a reason why he is strong enough to challenge literally like all the other homes, along yeah. with a lot of outworld heroes who have now like left his side. Like the whole right. point of MK3, like the Leo 2, should be people slowly turning on Shao Kahn. Right. Because there are exactly. so many people in the Khan Guard who has no reason to side with him. Right. And then okay, they can all team up and kill him. It doesn't have to be right. just Liu Kang, it doesn't have to be just Raiden. You can have a team of people be him, and then they can all have the credibility of finally killing him. Exactly. And let, let's talk about people who should let's talk about people who are victimized by Shao Kahn and should turn against and should turn against him or have a beef with him for some other reason. Katana, Sindel, Melina, Scarlet, Meat, Reptile, Sea Million, Cave Million, Goro, Kentaro, Shiva, Motaro, uh, fucking Ermac, Natara, uh, Rain, huh? Natara, thank you, Tanya, Taven. I mean, he's he's not woken up by MK3, but like you get the idea, you know, um, like. Like I mean, we, we said this he, before when we talked about Reiko, he should be the only one that's really like on Shao Kahn, like ride or die with Shao Kahn. Yeah, collector to an extent, but it's very him. unclear, but especially since like his race was enslaved by this dude, so he must Collector have some grudges. Ultimately, yeah. Um, yeah, well, yeah, yeah the Nagana should want to rise up against him. All, fucking everybody should want to rise up against him. He uh, manipulated uh, the Shokan and Centaurs into a race war. He he he. Uh, Fucking drove Sindel to suicide and conquered Udenia and like basically destroyed Katana's entire family and manipulated her sisters. He starves his and he starves his own like army. They are more loyal to Reiko because they treat him better. Yeah, well, actually, that reminds me. Remember when I said like the only like when we talked about Baraka? I think yeah, I think it was Baraka. Like the Tarkatans eating people would make sense if you if you do it to like Shao Kahn is intentionally starving them to make them act savagely. Yeah. That that ties into that deception conquest thing, actually, now that I just realized it. Right. He genocided the Saurian race, he conquered Returnus and everything, and like most of it, 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 it yeah, supplied that most of the vampires went underground. He he like forced the Ashtek realm into submission. He he massacred the vast majority of the Kaitin as well. Uh, he taxes he, literally people. everyone and like has like yeah. bugs like collector threaten people right. for the money. Um, there are probably other species that he's just straight up wiped out entirely. Uh, you know, I, I imagine he forces people to enroll into like the Khan God's army. Right, he forces people into his army, which includes like Jade and such. 
Um, you know, it's is and and these are all like okay for him as a villain. Like these are all like big accomplishments. Like he he's he's clearly a big threatening villain who has a, who has affected a lot of other characters and has done a lot of bad shit. Like he's fucking yeah. super Hitler. And he's doing like, a good like, job scheming his way to the top, and that's cool. But yes. the thing is, yeah. as a sole but individual. He needs- he, 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 he's powerful as a solid individual, but the main thing that made him such a big threat was his empire, not him right. as a standalone guy. He can lose fights. It's okay, guys. He can lose yes. the women. Calm down. Fucking hell. Yeah, he can lose. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, he can lose the fucking women. Armageddon even like uses like uh, the main use to start a satisfy. Like, Sindel was like his rival. Like, yeah, she should totally kick his ass. Like, yeah. Shit. Um, oh my God. There's not the fact that like literally all the Neverrealmers would be against all the, everyone in Sado, everyone in Chaos Realm. Yeah, Order um, Realm is against him. Chaos Realm is against him. Because they're, they're future threats, and also they obviously have reasons to not like this motherfucker in general. Right. The the Satan Guard view him as like uh, as 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 chaotic, and also they don't they don't like that they don't like the tyrannical style of control to begin with. They prefer their method of enforcing order. They they, they yeah. are tyrants. Like, I I know the sense of like sound like, like the chaos one of the two outward rules, but also it doesn't make sense. Uh, so I'm just going to go and say chaos rules hate him because that should be the logic. I don't care what Havoc right. thinks. <laughs> um, yes, yes, Chaos Realmers should hate him because he's a dictator who wants to control things. Yeah, uh, and also, again, if you are a realm, then he, then you are, then, um, you are in danger because Shao Kahn is trying to right. murder all the realms. Obviously, um, Earth Realm is his consistently biggest target in, like, the modern, uh, not, well, not the modern, but, like, like, uh, the, the 21st century. In the in universe twenty first century, do you get what I mean? Yeah, anyone, um, yeah, anyone who knows Bam in Earth is obviously gonna hate him. Um, everyone in Neverarm hates him. I mean, a lot of them are probably in Neverarm because of Shao Kahn. Um, yep. I will be sorry for that. He he has a lot of accomplishment as 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 a villain that we that we pointed out, but he needs his downfall. Yeah, That's it's actually as we point out, yeah. literally every round hates him. Right, he can't be the <laughs> ultimate big bad forever. That just doesn't work. He needs to come down eventually. Bad time, okay, free. You can bring him back fire. later, like have him like fight through an ever. I'm like with with like a like some loyalists find him, um, yeah. and then that that can lead him to like a return by like arm again because you want to have like a lot of like the villains. Uh, that that works, but everything between MK3 and Armageddon, no, he doesn't contribute anything to those storylines. He just exists and is pathetic, and anyone who's like still associated with him, uh, uh, it's basically just like filler, or they're actually getting ruined, like Goro, um, by association. Right, right. Or 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 characters like Melina and Scarlet who are denied character development because of their association with him. And the same thing is true of Reptile and a bunch of other characters that I mentioned already. Uh, yeah. yeah. Also, uh, yeah. Also, he knows blood magic, and he created Scarlet. That's a thing. Uh, yes, Never he, uses blood magic, magic, though. Never properly uses soul no, magic. Theme. I don't no. remember if play if his green energy is soul magic or not. Um, okay. I, I'm fine with him not using certain types of magic that he technically knows, like, because he's arrogant and he thinks that he can brute force everything. But I do yeah, think same, but again, you need that explanation. Like, just like a yes. casual bit of intro dialogue. Yes. And uh, you and I think he, we should at least see him using soul magic and blood magic to like heal himself and stuff. Yeah, but no, Quan Chi, please take me to your hospital. Put on a nurse outfit, please. Nurse me to hell. <laughs> nurse Quan Chi, whoa. Yeah. So yeah, and then yeah, it's it's an, he just hinders other characters and oh my god. Yeah, so there's a lot of problems with Shao Kahn. He can be a really, really effective villain, but he also has a lot that finishes of him. He should be important and strengthen a lot of characters, give a lot of characters arcs. Right. Instead, he actively harms like most of the Khan guard. Right. He's a massive mixed bag. He really shouldn't be there between MK3 and Armageddon. He just shouldn't be around for any of those. I appreciate that you haven't um, talked about him in like order of game role because it's just Shao Kahn. We pretty don't need. Yeah, it's just Kahn. <laughs> we just bounce around. Yeah, and then you know, and then it gets even worse with modern shit because they want to make because they make him a fucking like sex slave on their next basis. And it's so disgusting, and I need it to stop. Like I said, just make him a romantic and asexual. I'm not saying he's necessarily a positive representation. 
but but just it don't bring it up. Not a <laughs> yeah, yeah just don't bring up and make his reason for marrying Simna like a political thing, like you well, suggested, instead of like right. some creepy like predator thing. No, yes, thank you. In, in, in my story, he he uses it. He uses her to essentially like placate the the Edenians. Like, oh look, I've got rulers of like my spokesperson to tell you to chill the fuck out and not rebel against me too much. Plus, okay, thanks, bye. You know, like that kind of thing. Like that's yeah. that's what it was. And um... and then also like Katana was like where he got the idea for experimenting with using. Uh, the 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 illusion of fatherhood as a way to manipulate people into being loyal to him, um, which obviously carries over into into Melina and Scarlet, who deserve as to be redeemed just as much as Katana. Again, I'm not gonna stop bringing it up. So yeah, that I think that's it. Yeah. Um, this was kind of a scatterbrain look at his character, but you know, it, it, yeah. Uh, He's gone nearly really two been, hours, and this is our third character. That's <laughs> awesome. Let's just let's do it. Um, I moved him to C tier, just below Shang Tsung. But if you want to move him lower, I totally get it. I yeah, C T is generous, generous because, like I said, I only like him in MK two and three, where he's a very basic villain. Um, yeah. I think, sure, but basic. Okay, so D then. Yeah, D. I maybe even he, but like, because it kind of fits E's description. But yeah, D makes sense. I want to say he's like a he's like a meh concept. Like he's yeah, I guess he's a strong concept. It just needs to be used correctly. Uh, to me anyway. Um, I hmm, because there's a lot of characters that I like more than him, but have less. He doesn't like conflict with his own concept that much, so like I, I feel like he could go above like Cetrion. Yeah. Okay, so below Scorpion, above Cetrion. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Scorpion is like actually a layered character and shit. Like, sure, he gets me, he gets misused a lot too, and his and his popularity can be really annoying. But like when he's good, you know, it's it's, it's actually like interesting and compelling. And Shao Kahn at his best is well a solid villain, but still just you know villain. Yeah. Um Yeah. So that's that's that. On to uh Shinnok? Yeah, I'm hiding Shinnok. <laughs> yeah, let's just keep let's just keep going. Let's just make this one obnoxiously long. <laughs> I'm willing to do uh, Shinnok, Jinko and the these two. <laughs> Long running okay. characters. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's that's fine. So Shinnok is cool as fuck. <laughs> yes, um, yes. He is definitely one of my favorite villains in the franchise. Possibly my second favorite. Between him, Onaga, and Dagon, it's like tough for me to like choose. Um, yeah. Like, in terms of writing, he's definitely the weakest of those three, but that's that's not really his fault. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Shinnok is, you know, I mean, people, people I think know Shinnok at this point. You know, he's the, he's the fallen elder god who wanted to control the mortals and the elder gods are like nah leave him alone uh and he wants to like, conquer the realms and everything and he was banished to the nether realm and then took over from the protector god lucifer who is not on this tier list because we have no visual of him i um, think he is actually he is oh sweet i think i just took an image of like a typical lucifer maybe um, if, if not then i can yeah yeah there's like a, there's like a few like little little loose ends here and then that we can throw onto this um, yeah, so he was introduced, obviously, in Mythology Sub-Zero, where, which introduced the bulk of his lore, and introduced Quan Chi and the Brother of Shadow, and all that uh, good stuff, and then he was the main villain of MK4, where he launched a massive invasion, which, okay, I think his MK4 stuff is, like, really underrated, like, yeah, MK4 doesn't convey its story as clearly as, like, Mythology does, because Mythology has cutscenes, uh, but MK4, like, I, I feel like what he does there is, like, really underrated, because actually, like, he launches a, a, a massive invasion where he not only attacks just Earth realm like Shao Kahn did, but he also goes after like every other realm like simultaneously. His army is so large and he is so powerful that he can just go after every realm. He goes after Edenia, uh, Outworld, I think, although that's not stated more concretely until I guess. He even attacks the heavens where the Elder Gods are and like manages to, and, he's, and he kills 
the uh, Earth God, Water God, and Fire God from mythology. Yeah, MK4 so, is the oh, only stage. It is the only game to have a heaven stage. Um, oh, interesting. The one with the weird um, blue Aldi God faces. Um, <laughs> so heaven has a stage, but it order Realm and chaos from done. Okay, I see how it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, so he does all of that, and he and then the heroes manage to bring him down by like sort of pulling together with with some of the outworld forces. Obviously, there's the Denny and Shokan Centaur Treaty and all of that, um, and and that that's obviously considered effort on their part. And then he's defeated, and he goes away for a while until he comes back in Armageddon, where he's even cooler uh, because he's like basically the grand architect of the entire forces of darkness plan. He's manipulating and bringing disparate elements together he's having quan chi doing shit for him he resurrects onaga he he uses uh he, he basically orchestrates the forces of darkness coming together he's revealed to be the one who manipulated dagon into turning evil in the first place and dagon is like he's using dagon to achieve his ultimate goals of like ascending to somewhere even higher to where he can like get at the elder gods and stuff and he manipulates haven for a little bit he's the best villain at scheming he he yes, does he, he does really a lot is. like Shao Kahn, but it always works with him. Right, he's able to make uh, like illusions to like test Haven and Dagon stuff. Yeah, yeah, Shinnok is yeah. He's he's like the grand architect of everything that actually goes on in Armageddon. And his, in his ending, it's even stated that he he was he was he was playing so much fucking four D chess that he sent <laughs> a duplicate of himself to the battle at the pyramid rather than appearing physically. So that he could avoid uh, any specific danger to himself. Although yeah. in his ending, it backfires because the duplicate absorbs the power blaze and becomes just as powerful as the real Shana, so they have to fight each other. But that's uh, that's a different thing. <laughs> and yeah, him uh, having like an actual duplicate actually makes sense because, like you said, we've seen the conquest. He has right. he makes apparitions, which uh, right. they're not real, but also they like they're legit threats. They can actually do stuff. Right. And uh, and, and he, real quickly, in his only like live action appearance in Annihilation, and that version of him is basically behind everything that Shao Kahn's ever done. Like like Shao oh, yeah. Kahn's gambits are all part of a larger scheme of that version of Shinnok because that version of Shao Kahn is his son and stuff and and all that. And it, it's weird, but it kind of works for the movie. He doesn't look anything like Shinnok, but yeah, yeah. and he and he would have been the villain of the third movie, which uh, never got made. So that would have been kind of cool. It's um, it's an un, it's like a it's like a very one of very few cases uh, in MK of a like an inaccurate portrayal, but one that's still neat in its own way. Um, right, it kind of works for for what it is. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah. and I feel like I, I feel like the nineties movies kind of do that a lot, <laughs> like with uh, with Shinnok and Shakana, Raiden and Shang Tsung. Like they're neat, but they're not really like accurate and stuff. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, so like midway era Shannock is a big fucking deal, and it was like really good at his scheming. You know, every, everything that happens in mythology with the whole quest for Shannock, same and all that is is, is him too. He's he so cool in mythologies. If you yes. don't kill Scorpion when you and be Hans chugging to the um prison, um, he's just about to fucking taunt you. Yeah. And he just has like an old man, and then he's like, "Oh, <laughs> well, I'll play Raiden's game a little longer." And then he just disappears. He's yeah. so cool. And he and Quan Chi both do this thing where they taunt Bihan about the darkness and his soul, sort of foreshadowing for what ends up being the new Saibon reveal. And that doesn't that shit doesn't happen until Deception, and that probably wasn't even intentional, but it makes it feel intentional because he's like, "Oh, because Shin Shin uh, tells Bihan like, oh, if you are here, you must belong here.' Like." Yeah. Holy shit. Oh man. man. Also, Armageddon, his best voice. Troy Baker is overrated. Um <laughs> Yeah. He's he's so he's so cool. He's he's awesome. Unfortunately, NRS again. Oh my so, god. He is the main villain, kind of. Okay. He's the main villain of the very beginning and the very end of MKX. Uh, Kotal Khan is the main villain of the, of the rest of it, I guess, probably. Yeah. Here in chapter go one, he is at the end of chapter nine, oh, he's in chapter it? 10, oh. um, and then chapter 12, because chapter 11 is, um, Kotal's union fucking filler fights, because he wants to help Shinnok, because he's a coward. Yeah, he wants to appease Shinnok, because he's a piece of shit, right. So, 
that should not, there's nothing wrong with him character wise, but he's kind of like disrespected in terms of the right. Like he's just written like in, in just lame. He's right? underused and he is less. Yeah. He he's he's, he's, not he's nowhere near as cool as in um like right. previous portrayals. And while he's still right. fine, it is underwhelming because Shinnok can be yes. so much cooler. It's and I think it caused a lot of motherfuckers to like this guy isn't cool. Right. And he is right. he's just yeah. not in the conventional big bad with yeah, like a right. crazy it's, it's, design. Right. And, and, right. And, and X, it's like it's more of a legitimate problem than like what people complain about Shao Kahn. Because like he's not as powerful as he as he should be. He he doesn't feel as threatening as he should be. He just he gets sidelined a lot and it's it's you know, he gets beaten up by like a new character while him getting an upgraded form. And I know they explain the glow, but I don't like the explanation because it's like it's it's a bit lame. He's just kinda lame. His character is fine, but he's lame as hell in, in that, and it really drags him down. He's only a character that should have, like, again, like I said, MK3 Shark Khan, you can have, like, a group of people fine. I know in story mode, because oh. they feel the need yeah. to fucking, like, do a like, chapter system, they don't want to do that. But yeah. Just do a chapter of, like, a four round battle where each round it switches you to a different combat kit or something. Like, come on. Like you know what? Like okay, you want you want to know a cool idea I had for an MK final fight? Yeah. Okay, so you know how the MK one Shang Tsung boss battle is like a memory test, like see if you know if you remember like how to deal with the patterns of the AIs of all the other characters. Yeah. With his uh, shape shifting, I think it would be really cool to have a final battle where it's it's a bunch of characters ganging up on the final boss, and the game is switching which character you're playing as. To sort of test your ability to remember all of their move sets and be able to use them all on like the fly and stuff. Yeah, that'd be cool. I don't know. That's just something I thought of. That has nothing to do with Shinnok specifically, but like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So he's just lame in MKX. It's, it doesn't really ruin him. I mean, I mean, it, it's made like some people think that he's lame, but those people are wrong. Um, <laughs> so that's, okay. that, that, ugh, him. We still need to make that video about him. Mm. He needs to pay. Um, so, fuck, I'm trying to think, no, X is, X is it for, well, okay, he gets, like, captured and tortured by Dark Raid, and he gives, like, Trigger Chronic again, so, he has nothing to do with it, he's not in MK11, and there's nothing to do in MK11, even though his sister and mother are major characters, and they, so they don't do anything with those dynamics, and that's really a shame, because it's, that's, like, a side of him that we never, that we've never seen before, and that we never would have even thought of before, we never, yeah, uh, him having a family, it sounds weird at first, but it's interesting because it's nothing it's nothing anyone would ever have thought of before. They could have done something with that, but unfortunately they don't. Uh, it doesn't really again, it still doesn't damage shit on character. And if you look at uh, annihilation, it is you you can see it's a very weird idea, but something along those lines right. works for Shinnok. Yeah, Regardless yeah, yeah, yeah. of it the contact, be, it can still be interesting. Right, it can be kind of interesting, right? The way he sort of masterminds behind Shao Kahn and Annihilation is kinda of cool. And uh, right, so yeah, so that's that's all a major waste. Uh, but again, it doesn't really damage his character. Here's what does though: Battle of the Realm. Oh no, I forgot about this. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna yeah. let my ranking of him because it's not Shinnok. If I had a yeah. separate yeah. bird for this, it, then this is F tier because it goes against Shinnok completely. Yeah, so he becomes a madman that wants to awaken the one being, even though he's an elder god, so he would have fought the one being, and he would have known that it's a threat, and he would want to take control of the realm. Yeah, so by the way, Shinnok's amulet, Shinnok amulet was made to help combat the one being. It's almost like, exactly. that could be the most powerful artifact, not the soul crown. Right. And also, right. that is right. proof that he does not like the one being. The reason he doesn't merge realms is because of the one being. He knows about yeah. him. He knows exactly. that he can make up if he merges the realms. He will conquer the realms, exactly. but not merge them. He doesn't need to. He doesn't to. want to merge with the one being. The only other time that he awakens the one being is in his MKX ending, and he does that. At least he does that. At least that has a reason, because he he reawakens the one being to so that it kills the other gods to spite them. Which is still kind of dumb in terms of like him wanting to like rule stuff, but it makes more sense than him just being fucking crazy. Yeah, and again, endings you make no sense half the time, so I can look past right. it. I can't look past that movie. Yeah. But the main thing Plus, is him trying to become the one being. Right. Using the Kami Dogu, which the Kami Dogu yeah, are located in the Temple of Elements. And his amulet is a key. Like, what the fuck? Right. 
Right. That's not how the Kami Dogu work. And if he and and if he wanted them, if he was like aware of the Kami Dogu enough to try and track them all down, it should be, you know, to do what Onaga wanted to do with them and fuse them into into the one Kami Dogu so he can so he can like control fucking reality. I think it's so fucking like offensive that like they actively had to look they look through the plots of all these games that these little elements are from, and they felt the need to change it all and slap it together. And they thought it was a good they, idea. Mythologies, Deception, MK2, a little bit of MK4, and like even like a little bit of MK3, and they just smash them together, and it just doesn't work at all. And it's clearly like like it's clearly like really really rushed, right? Yeah. Like, like I've seen, I've seen, like, I've, 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 I've talked to at least one person who likes this movie overall, but also like thinks that it feels rushed. So, like, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. It really, they, they didn't, they should not have crammed those two together. Replacing Shujinko and Onaga with Shinnok and Scorpion is fucking stupid. It really. Uh, By the way, Scorpion's Revenge established he's still imprisoned and the key was to free him. They literally yeah. wreck on their own movie. Hey, hey, if Shadok is still in prison, uh, where's Lucifer, by the way? You know, yeah, exactly. It doesn't make you sense. You thought about that too, didn't you? Yeah, it's stupid. It's really, really, really stupid. But it's so out of character that it doesn't really damage his character and can be disregarded. So and also, with Father Arms, it doesn't matter. Such an irrelevant so, series. So that's it. Yeah, Shinnok is an awesome villain. Um, I think I don't know if he's I don't I don't know if he's a tier good. Like I, I like I think I, he's higher B tier. Sure. Um, yeah. So, okay. I mean, what what do you want to do? I agree with that. Okay. Because I I thought um, A at first, but that's like a lot of promise, like in general. Um, right. He's not used of, he's not like utilized the best that he could be, even though yeah. he's really good. Well, especially like the modern stuff kind of brings it down a little bit. And just like, Valorant's is proof of how easy it is for people to misunderstand him, I guess, which I guess is kind of a problem with his character, kind of. I don't know. Um, and then you know, obviously just acts just makes him really lame and I Brady say this. I I say so I literally ain't no one, but he should have been an MK eleven. He would actually yeah. benefit from that game, despite the exactly bullshit. that that connection would have been so interesting. So okay, on my tier list, uh, I've moved him up to one, just one above Movado, but one below Cyrax. I mean, I probably like him more than Cyrax. I, I probably like him more than Cyrax Delia. Uh, fair. I I tend to gravitate towards more like sympathetic and like symp- sympathetic empathetic characters, I guess, than than just villains. But yeah, if you think he's higher, that that's fine. Uh, just below Kenshi, then. Yeah, sure. We'll go with that. Yeah. I think that works. I still like Kenshi more. I th- uh, like I said, I, I tend to gravitate towards characters that are more sympathetic and and and, and I can empathize with and connect to rather than just villains. Even though I, I do like a good, cool villain, you know. Yeah, so I definitely like Shinnok more than Kenshi, but I think Kenshi's just done better. Um, obviously, the B tier are really like obviously solid characters of the name, uh, and I think Shinnok's definitely one who is deserving of being like above. But the problem is that he just needs to be used more. And there's like some minor things like um, right. the whole like Taven I mean, Dagon connection. There needs to be right. some operation because it doesn't actually fit right. with the time. So. I mean, Every, I think everyone in B tier, every character that is in B tier, could be S tier if they were used more and used correctly. Yeah, so same, for, kind of same for a lot of people in D tier, actually. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, the, that's like the totem to wasted potential. It's, it's really a shame. Um, but here's some, a little bit wasted potential, but really not. Let's talk about uh the best Mortal Kombat protagonist. Fight me. Jujinko. The man, the myth, the legend, Jujinko. I was going to get prepared and put him in top of S tier real quick. <laughs> Base. Oh, top of S, really? Okay. Oh, definitely. We've seen his okay. whole life. He, he has exactly. to be the top. That's what I was going to, that's what I was going to start up with. Uh, so Jujinko is the, is inarguable. Well, okay. Other than probably Raiden. Shujinko was the singular most fleshed out and complete character in the entire franchise. Because in Deception Conquest, we journey with him for pretty much his entire life. 
we get to see him grow and, and gain all his abilities and, and learn more about the world and about the world around him and everything. It's, it's really fascinating. You know, he started out as this kid who just wanted adventure and that unfortunately, yes, allowed him to be manipulated by Damashi, but you know, he, he gained a lot of wisdom along the way and he ma- and he managed to make amends for it in the end by defeating Onaga. Um, and, and even then, like, he, he, he stayed humble, you know, he didn't feel worthy of, like, some of the adulation that he got, especially the Outworlders, for beating Onaga, because he felt like it was his fault, and he's just, he's just a really awesome character, he's a great hero, he's, he's, he's compassionate and selfless and willing to help people no matter what, willing to work with people, even, like, negotiate with villains to try and come to a good compromise, like, like, when he tried to help, uh, help the people of Lei Chen uh, you know, to not get wiped out by Shao forces, but also help Melina accomplish her mission by trying to convince Overlord Sephiroth to give himself up in exchange for the lives of people because Melina didn't want to have to kill everyone. He's a bit of a dick to Baraka for some reason in that Outworld section, but that's fine. Um, you know, he has, <laughs> I like that one. I, I look, the compass does such a good job because it gives him so many character connections. Yes, he has so many characters. He's he's uh he gained like he gained the ability to like control like darkness and a soul that he got from going to another realm with Nightwolf. He trained with Ashra and like uh, is like a, a good a, a friend of hers. Like when you when you encounter Ashra for a side in, in uh, Edenia, just as a comic, you know she she still remembers you. She's like I have done it. I'm free and it's oh, it's so lovely and adorable. Um and you know he he was with the Lin Kuei for a bit. He trained with. Uh, grandfather, so he could like maybe tell slash read his mind. You know, he, he helped Kenshi get into the MK1 tournament, so they have that. Also, I felt betrayed by him, and that, that's like a genuinely like really good like moment. And it's such a good scene. Uh, he's yeah. sort of tangentially connected to Dairu. Obviously, him and Onaga have a big fucking thing. You know, he's he's dreamed about taking down the likes of Shang Tsung and Shao Kahn for a while, so he's predisposed beef with them because he knows how evil they are and he wants to stop them and everything. Um he he uh he trained he was one of he was one he and obviously in Boraicho, he trained Lee May to help her become a better fighter and obviously learned under uh Boraicho, who trained both him and you know, Lee May herself. Uh, so he has that connection, and and and, and he's another character. Similarly, it's like Lieutenant Colonel Lau, that Bo Rancho father figure too. He's got his best buddy Apep, so you know he could he could potentially have a connection thereby to the Crypt guy from MK. Uh, you know he could meet Bo Rancho's other pupils, Lieutenant Colonel Lau. He he's he's on pretty fairly good terms with Raiden, at least until Raiden becomes Dark Raiden. Then Raiden's mad at him, but even that is interesting. He helps Katana and Sindel when Edenia is under attack. So, you know, in addition to that interaction with Melina, he pretty much has a connection to that whole family, minus, like, Scarlet and Mead and King Jared and stuff. Um, he has a connection to, like, so many factions as a whole, yeah, so yeah, if you're part of that Ermac faction, out, then you can... He helped Ermac find that like, soul stone. Um, he's just a helpful guy. He just helps people. Yeah, yeah. He's a really he's a, he's a really nice person. He's just a good guy. You know, he, he trained with Scorpion a little bit too. Um, and then that becomes sort of a betrayal moment later when Scorpion becomes the champion to the Elder guy. He, uh, yeah, he's just he's do, he's done it all. He's been to all of the realms. He's he's met tons of people. He has connections with a bunch of people. Oh, Havoc is another one. Um, he's got like kind of a weird thing with Havoc. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, he does, he does a better job at kind of understanding havoc more than most uh, most other people, so that's kind of cool. You know, uh, he's he's yeah, I don't know. Shijinko's just awesome. Yeah, there's a there's a there's another uh, MK YouTuber, much smaller channel that unfortunately is no longer around. That made a really wonderful video about Shijinko, and uh, if they ever come back, please check that out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a, kind of a shame to lose that one, but yeah, Shijinko's a fantastic character. Uh, easily, I think the best Mortal Kombat protagonist. I don't know if he's necessarily like my my favorite, just because Taven is also great, and um, they're they're like sort of neck and neck. But yeah, he's Shijinko is awesome. Yeah, and all this from just he, one game, and there's still just one game. Armageddon, so, which is a good follow-up, and I think Arsenal's less important, but he's still. 
got a lot of pride. Yeah. Right. He's still quite prominent because mm-hmm. um, he actually gets a bio card and it talks about how, like, he's, he, after being an anger, he's seen as like a hero of the people. Hero to the people of Outworld. And that's cool. That makes sense. And obviously, he's a good depiction of Outworld's people. And, um, mm-hmm. But he, he doesn't feel like worthy of that because he brought that right. upon the realm. So if what he does with like the whole first force of darkness thing happening, he's like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a plan and I'm gonna go to the fortress alone and I'm gonna deal with all these motherfuckers and then yeah, I will be then I will have made amends. So that he can so that he can escape. And then he, he, he lets himself, he allows himself to be captured by Shotgun's fortress so he can then escape and then go into the soul chamber and absorb all the souls. So that in addition to all the powers that he's copied, because, okay, early on in his quest, Damashi gave him the ability to copy the powers and skills of other warriors. So he knows tons of martial arts stuff and can use the superpowers of basically any other MK character. So that is really cool. With the energy of the of the souls in the soul chamber, he's going to use to like wipe out the forces of the forces of darkness and stop the threat before it gets to uh, a, a breaking point. He doesn't ultimately succeed in that. He's just at the battle with everybody else. But you know, it's, it's a you, it's a smart you could ins- that assume that he uh, he he did destroy the fortress, obviously. But um, everyone like like the main villains had already left. Obviously, they went to the ruins. Um, yeah, that's 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 interesting. Yeah, I mean, it would it would mean he would probably be more powerful. So it doesn't really make sense to show Khan, not show Khan, Shane Sung like bats him aside in the intro. But other than that, I mean, yeah. <laughs> He sh- he shows up in the in uh, he shows up in the MKX comic. Uh, there's nothing really wrong with his character. He just gets fucking blood code mind control. It's just lame, but like it's very lame, lame, and it's so sad that that's his only like canonical appearance yeah. after like those two really good appearances. Like right. it, 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 it seems to people now seem to not realize how important Shijinko should be treated as a character. Right. It, here, because they, they forget about like the quest, even though that should be an important thing that happens in every time. I don't know why you would ignore that. He's just like an old Shadow Master, which makes sense for him, yeah, but I, I it, like it's very lame. Right. I do, I do like the part that he trains other Shaolin in his downtime, but that shouldn't be like at the expense of acknowledging the quest at all. Yeah, like once the quest done, it definitely makes sense that he become a Shaolin Master. I don't like ignoring the quest, just so he can be an old man. Right. Or even him uh, right. Or even like him training people like in between like his his journeys to other realms and shit. Yeah, because then there's also the fact that like he doesn't have like all the powers as well and stuff. It's just like, yeah, it's, like it's just so lame. Yeah. Um, Hanzo like already knows Shijinko for some reason in, in, in the comic and like respects him, which is like it's cool which is cool. Like they don't I played the cool. game, Shijinko. I know who you are. I've seen your life. Ah, uh, I see. A pretty That's good cool. game, huh? <laughs> I agree. These modern fans don't really play Deception anymore. <laughs> yeah. Even though they should. Yes. Anyway. Anyway, um, That was silly, but I don't care. So yeah, what a great character. Took him literally one appearance, and obviously Armageddon is also a very good follower, which I appreciate. Um, But just from Deception Conquest alone, he is the best Mortal Kombat character. I mean, mean, (laughs) let's put it this way. The the like the the subsequent four S tiers below him are all characters that are also connected to him. Lee May, Bo Raicho, Nightwolf, and Onaga. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's pretty goaded. Uh, <laughs> it's great. So, yeah, top of S tier. I see more in that too. Uh, uh, second, second in S tier, uh, just below Nico. Ah, uh, fine. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I had to make the jokey joke. <laughs> Nico Stu, 10 out of 10. Anyway, <laughs> already. So uh, next we have uh, Siang from the Malibu comics. Thank you for remembering his name because I fucking can't. <laughs> yeah. So Siang is actually uh, two, two uh, Shaolin monks. Their individual names are like Sting and Sang or something. And they're able yeah. to fuse together into a more powerful warrior. 
and that's it. That's the whole concept. So that I think that's cool. I think that's pretty unique. It, it, it does the fusion dance better than um, right. Liu Kang and Raiden. Better than fucking Fire Guard Liu Kang, exactly. You could establish like maybe they have like a split single soul instead of two individual souls, and maybe that's how they can do it or something like that. Um, so, yeah, I can't really feel about using them, but they're definitely unique. Yeah, um, which is a good thing, to, obviously. To, yeah, I think he's like a character that's supposed to like flesh out the tournament in the Malibu comics, so he probably like dies or something. But yeah, no, I think I think it's really unique and really cool. And that's uh, that's it. Yeah, where, where should he go then? I'm gonna put him like just one above Grum. Yes, no fine. Yeah, he's a more okay. unique concept, but he's mostly just like a concept that is neat. Also, should we move Celine above like the actual children? I don't know. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't really mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then last for this part, uh, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So last for this part, we have uh, Sion, who was one of the Brotherhood Shadow Brotherhood Shadow members from Mortal Kombat Conquest. We've talked about Mika and Celine previously. Uh, Sion yeah. is like the main one, right? Like she's like the sort of the lead one, and and the most, I... uh the most skilled and powerful fighter of the three. Yeah, I think or, she is. I think, yeah, she's kind of like the Serena of the group. Even though I still think right. Nika does get the most focus, I do think, like, in in lore, Sian's, like, the strongest. Um, yeah. Um, you want to yeah, keep so her that's... while we're here? Because she's on yeah, here as well. Who? Sora, Sora yeah. She's over there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sora is the other one. She's like, she's uh, well, okay. In terms of being strong, is I guess like Sion is like the Jataka, then Mika is like the Serena in terms of sim- in terms of sympathetic qualities, but Sora is sort of the Kia uh of of that of that group. Um, yeah. Visually, she's supposed to be like the Jataka because. She's the black the black lady, um, because they just they matched that up to the games, but didn't actually use those three characters. So that's kind of weird, but it's it's fine. More more characters, right? Uh, so Sora is she's um, huh? She's like the second most powerful fighter of the group, and God, there's not much to her. Like I I don't know like what to say without just going into like shit that we wholesale made up. Well, so there's like some basic stuff that um obviously they share with Mika. Um again I think Mika's the only one that really gets like some of those. Um because obviously they are they all three of them are like they've gotten like their forms from like Quan Chi's sorcery, um and Quan Chi like often mistreats him, like threatens to like put them back to their original state and whatnot. Probably send them back to another one as well, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um I can't remember. Um but yeah, stuff like that. Um and that they're like they're like master manipulators and um I think that's their title, master manipulators and something else. Assassins probably. Um that's, that's their role. Um uh, like like Sion is if I remember correctly, like the most like sort of uh, aggressive one. I'm checking the wiki. Um Sion specifically appeared in World Cup Federation Martial Arts. Um yes. she lost a sub zero, but beat Shang Tsung. That's right. What? Clean. Clean. Whoa. Right. Okay. That's, right. That's interesting. Um. But yeah, I can't really find anything like stand out about these two. I always can't watch the show. A, I've seen a, clips, a, but the only clip I've seen that obviously focused on Mika more. I I can't really give there's any. There's a um. There's a Mortal Kombat Conquest website. Oh yeah, yeah. It has yeah. like personality stuff, but also has like old fanfics like it's it's, oh, it's mm-hmm. a weird website yeah there's like a weird like corner of the fandom that's like really obsessed with conquest and like right like like sure. people, like okay you know how i said that the actor for who played quan chi's conquest was like funny skits on youtube yeah like i i kind of respect it i don't fully respect it because that show is like super misogynistic but um, like, cool, you know? Yeah. So, we are Tion is the strongest of the three, and she was able to defeat Kung Lao in combat, and even Shang Kung. Holy Kong. shit! Um, 
Wow, yeah. Uh, anyway, Shang Tsung, I'm guessing. He's like Bora level. Yeah, I got on this villains wiki, um, and yeah, it, it says even Shang Tsung. Villains, villains, villains wiki makes shit up. I wouldn't trust. Uh, oh yeah. Um, yeah, I just realized. Um, mentioned it mentioned Shang Tsung because okay, I know Fight coming out. I can't remember that. Um. Um, there's Mika. We already talked about her. Because every, because uh, I've seen a lot of scenes of him, but the only character that really stands out to me is like uh, Mika, even though I know there's definitely some uniqueness with him. Um, I know Sienna's yeah, the strongest yeah. of all. Is he? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, here's something interesting. So the 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 three of them, I think, are like formerly were like just corpses. Formerly. Yeah, that that's it. Oh yeah, that, that, that's what that's what he means. What that's what Quan Chi yeah. must mean when he says, "I will turn to your original form." He just means, "I will fucking kill you." <laughs> right. In, in in modern uh, lore, you'd probably just make them demons, but like here, they're like yeah, they're like resurrected corpses. Uh, hold on, I'm looking at Mika's page on the website. I can't like find one for. Uh, Sion or Sora, which is uh, well, in, one, in one episode, she two, she 1v2s on Taja and Sarah. She loses eventually, but she does a good job there because, like, like the, 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 the three the three assassins, like Sion, Sora, and Mika, they're actually treated as like credible threats. I know there's like one scene where they just have them like fight these like randoms in like this weird, like just this weird like fighting thing. Just, just yeah. for the sake of like showing that they're strong, which is kind of neat. Um, Holy shit! Sorry, I was looking at his website. The actor who played Great Kung Lao in this show has like not aged at all. <laughs> yeah, I got my much. Um, yeah, um, I see if anyone's watched the show. I don't know more because they do do their own things. Obviously, they're not always all together or three of them. But I, I can't think of any specific stuff they do individually. Um, yeah, I'm trying... Besides doing stuff obviously on behalf of Quan Chi, usually involving like the main. Right. Um, I'm trying to decipher here. Hold on, because they have a section called Warriors where they have pages for some of the characters on this Conquest website, but they don't. It's not. It's not complete. Uh, um, they only have one for Mika. On yeah. An individual level. Let me. Uh, it makes sense because, like I said, Mika's one of actual like. Um, specific things to talk about. So yeah, I'm sort of feel just like um, they feel less focused on, and uh, but they're still three discreditable threats, um, which is interesting. Right. Again, Sion is stated to be the strongest. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what much there is to cover in particular. Because obviously, I don't know like that specific roles. Besides, obviously, playing for Quanji. Um, more of a Rod Shaman is always a good thing. Obviously, they have mutual connections with each other. Obviously, you can establish a connection right. with other preferred people, like obviously the other, the, the other right. world trio. Um, like, uh, on the game. Right, like we prefer, like we really, we ship Sora and Mika as a romance because yes. it's, uh, it's adorable. And then, uh, my head cannon, okay, in the show, um, in, in the, in the show, um, uh, uh, Sion and Celine are like beefing with each other for like, I guess, one sheet's approval or whatever. Yeah, so um, Celine and, shows up as like I, I, in like the last episode. Yeah. Um, and Sion doesn't like her. Uh, obviously, she's herself like a leader figure. She doesn't want that. So, I can't wait to can't you bring in this new person. Um, right. So, yeah. That's shifting material. It's material. <laughs> we have fun with that. We think they're playing hard to get with each other. Also, uh, the so by the way, has a little poll on the side uh, asking who's stronger between Scorpion and Sub Zero, and uh, Sub Zero is pulling ahead in the votes. As he should. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean, we didn't have to like cover all the roles. I just thought there was like something more. Um, and it probably is. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not a conquest connoisseur. Um, <laughs> you just know the gist of the house. Um, yeah, there's a lot you can do. 
Um, or the shadows, obviously, kind of enough. Numbers. <laughs> Here's something that happens. Um, there's a bit in the show where Sora shows up to offer, I guess, offer herself a Shams dress, but like, I guess, offer her service to Shao Kahn. Ah, uh, I guess so. That's not... No, no, it is like a weird, creepy sex thing. And then she Probably, like takes yeah. her to, she tries to take her to his room, and then she pulls a knife on him, and then turns out that she was actually Quan Chi. And uh, he and uh, I, I guess his Queen Korea made a better offer to Quan Chi than Shao yeah. Kahn. Yeah, um, I, I remember this because um, it leads into Quan Chi versus Shang Tsung. Yeah, it's a whole sequence of stuff. <laughs> um, the um, episode, by the way, is called Flawed Victory. I see what you did there. <laughs> like, I actually like that. Like, in terms of like those NK reference things, like they do, they overdo in like some of the NK songs. But I actually kind of like that. Okay. They have so, different episode names here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so for Sion and Sora, yeah, Sion and Sora, I'm thinking of ranking them, um, I'm putting, I, I, on mine, I put them between Komodai and, and Teron above Komodai, uh, with Sora above Sion. So it would go, like, Peron, Sora, Sion, Komodai. I'm confused. <laughs> I, wait. Okay. Hold on, I'm gonna. Uh, the viewers won't be able to see this. I'll just send you a screenshot. Because uh, I, I think they're interesting, and I honestly, I like Komodai well enough, but I find them more interesting than you know. Just, just play the order again, because I'm actually looking at it now. Uh, like this. <laughs> Does that work? All right. So that's the that's the end of this part. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, just go. Uh, just go through the list here. Mm -hmm. um, we got a we got Very a good coverage. Of, yeah, we did a lot of big characters. Two hours thirty six minutes. We gone. We well, don't yeah. like might be the longest part. I don't know. Uh, uh, I thought there was one that was just straight yeah. up three hours. <laughs> no, nah, there's one close. Um, around yeah. this time, I think. Uh, but the T here. Uh oh. And we got the E's, and then we got the F's for fucking atrocious. So, yeah, in the next episode, oh god, we got Slevendal <laughs> and uh, Sindel. Well, hey, we have real Sindel, and we can talk about the yeah. utter wasted potential of Scarlet and Smoke. And yeah. Actually, Sonya has a lot of wasted potential too, but she's more often decent than, than those other ones. Yeah, so thank you for watching this episode, everyone, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.